Welcome to Superior Heights football field here in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada. My name's Tony Bonifero. We'll be calling the junior football game here between the Superior Heights Steelhawks and the St. Mary's Knights. I'm joined by Coach John from White Pines. John, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to be here. So, uh, obviously, we're going to have a lot of time to talk here today, Coach, about you know what you guys are doing at White Pines and kind of excited to have that opportunity. So, We'll get into that. You guys had a really nice performance last night against Cora. Just quickly, what were your thoughts? Uh, it's early in the season. Anytime you're in a regular season matchup in the first half of the year, it's really about developing, getting better. Um, in this four-team loop, everybody makes the playoffs, so it's about just doing a few things right and then making the improvements as you go along the way. Yeah, absolutely, and you guys definitely did that yesterday, no question. Nice kick there. It's picked up by number 39 Nick Deering of the Steelhawks and he returns it out to the 37 yard line Superior Heights comes into this season winless so far St. Mary's I believe carries a one and one record into this game I believe they will beat you guys correct and then they lost to Cora and Superior Heights has uh, lost to White Pines and to Cora so far if I'm not mistaken correct correct okay so Superior Heights looking to get the ball moving here. Unfortunately, Superior lost one of their better players earlier this week. So it'll be interesting to kind of see how Coach Kluster is able to counter that loss. Looks like Niebel under center for Superior. Handoff right up the middle. Run by number, let's say number 30. Yes. We don't have a number 30, so we'll have to figure out who that is. Nice stop there by the Knights defense. Led by Head number 75, William Iodins. Noya Boyer, a nice quick reaction on that Boyer play. Jumping into the A gap, meeting him at the nine. point of contact. Did you catch the name there, John, from number 30? The No, I didn't. Okay, sorry. Yeah, we'll listen for it next time. As Niebel with the handoff again. And nice job by the Knights defense to. Pitch number 30, Dax Pringle. That's Dax Pringle. Sorry, number 30. Yeah. Who made that stop there? It's a bit of a game tackle. Yeah. Number 87 was the first one to set the edge. Ah, there. Number 43, Darren Tricartin. Nice job there. Tricartin had the pleasure of coaching him this past summer and easily one of the better safeties to ever play in Sioux Minor football. So nice to see him kind of transition to a, looks like he's playing like an outside linebacker, or sorry, he's playing a half role here. Yep. Niebel with a quick handoff up the middle and nice push by that offensive line of the Steelhawks. Nice run up the middle. Good hard run by number gets about eight yards. 18, Ben Trevisano. A great vision there by 18, finding a little hole, making a little quick cutback underneath all the linebackers. Scraping William Hyden, number 50, Matteo Pascuzzi in on the tackle for the Knights. Yeah, Ben was another young man I got to coach this summer, and he uh, he definitely elevated his game as the season went on, and uh, he absolutely loves football, and he, he's definitely not scared out there. So, you know, you can give him the rock a bunch of times, and he'll, he'll run hard. So fourth down and short here, so it's fourth and three, and the little counter to Ben, and he's eaten up by number 65, Kent LeBlanc, with a beautiful play. 65, Kent LeBlanc. That's a good sign to see Spear Heights 50, Mateo, sharing the love in the backfield, getting Knights a couple of guys over. involved early. You know, Honda last time we saw them, 44. they really did have one one real dangerous weapon in the backfield, but it's going to be important for them to establish a few weapons back there if they want to be successful. Yeah, nice job by the Knights defense. That's a good start for them as they take over. First down and 10 from the Steelhawks' 43-yard line going right to left here. Hayes. Alex Hayes, your quarterback for your St. Mary's Knights. Taking the snaps for the Knights. And Hayes with a handoff right up the middle to Cole Rive. Nice hard run, but he's Cole swallowed Ray. up by up number 52. Gets That's Drayden Brock. I sound like a broken record, but he's another kid I coached this summer, Drayden Brock. And, uh, nice to see him. They got him playing the middle linebacker position. That's where he should be playing. They had, you know, Drayden is an absolute stud out there. So, uh, you know, good job. And I also coached Cole this year too, so good run by Cole. Nice play there by the Knights, number 25. 
looks like ben Bo, Bo Primo, Primo sorry, picks up about eight yards over the right side. Yeah, one of the things with junior football, it takes coaching staff yards. a bit of time Tackle to figure out who they have and where they'll excel at this level. Superior Heights, you know, Sioux Minor football is such a great reference uh, resource for the city, getting kids prepared for the game. But the game changes a bit once you get to this level, and yep. kids definitely find themselves excelling at a different position. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a prime example of that is Cole Rive, Cole number 30, the running back here for the Knights. Uh, he, there he is right there, right on cue, with a good hard run up the middle like he does so well with a 10-yard run. Good run up the middle, be first Cole the played ice. everywhere from linebacker to backup Rebellion quarterback again. to wide receiver to running back for yeah, us yeah. this year to even on the line. You know, he, he's done it all. So uh, nice to That's see him having some success out here. He's an outstanding young man. And Alex Alex Hayes, you know, he won our Jacob league MVP Nelson. this year. Uh, first two minor football, led his team to the championship this year. Uh, one of the better quarterback prospects to come out over the last couple of years, that's for sure. As there's a fumble there, as there's a miscommunication fumbled, with Heights Stubbington recovers. and Superior Heights with a big recovery. Number 63, Looks Wyatt like number Herb. 63, Wyatt Herb. Johnny on the spot, drops on the ball. Say Superior Heights will take over. Would you see there, John, just a little miscommunication, like you think, in the backfield? Or it looked like, uh, it almost looked like Stubbington wasn't even ready for the ball. Yeah, I think the backfield mesh just wasn't tight. Uh, Hayes had to reach a bit further than I think he was expecting and then just yeah. wasn't able to get it in the pocket. So with 7.08 to play here in the first quarter, the Steelhawks will take over first down and 10 from their own 29-yard line. Just a little back out to lead the Steelhawks. Nebel under center. And Nebel with a handoff right up the middle and big run by number 64, Albert, Albert Perot. Perot. Puts his head down Great and picks up about eight, eight yards. Second down and two. He's an angle first down on here. the tackle for St. Mary's. Oh, first down, sorry, yeah, first down. So that'll be a 10-yard run. run. It's a first down, Superior Heights. Spears getting some success running up the middle early on. It'll be interesting to see if St. Mary's can adjust to that. Yeah, you know what? One thing, Coach, that I've noticed so far this year, especially in the junior loop, which we haven't seen as much, you know, in the past, is it seems the outside runs aren't there, and teams are being forced to run up the middle a lot more, and they're having success running up the middle, which I love to see. But I've noticed that a lot so far this year. What, what are your uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that contain is oftentimes a, a pretty strong fundamental Coming practice in junior carry. practices now. Um, yeah. That's usually where a lot of the big plays come. So early on in training camps, you try to establish guys, that. You know, for us, we try to manufacture yeah, a lot of ways to get that edge. So, yeah. Yeah, but it does take eight. a lot of planning and work. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I've not, nice job so far this season by all teams because, uh, again, it seems like the big runs are coming up the middle, you know, and then they're cutting, like Gazzetti yesterday, for example. Mm -hmm. As, well, big hit there by the Knights. Number 75, 75 William, Iodins. William Iodins again with a big hit. I think that was Dax Pringle again on the run, able to pick up a few yards. So it'll be third okay, down so and seven. Third and seven for Superior. 5.19 to play here in the first. St. Mary's in the alternate black uniforms that they sometimes tend, tend to wear now. Yeah, I like actually, those uniforms. I really like those uniforms. Yeah. I think they're uh, I think they're pretty sharp. So, yeah. Steelhawks. Back to pass. Nice throw on the out road and just out of reach, so but we're going to have a pass. hold. Pass intended for number six. Number six, Will Madaw. Will Madaw. We have a flag on the play. And sorry, I, I might be saying the wrong quarterback. I'm, I keep saying it's uh, Nebel, but I, I'm hearing uh, the announcer say a different name. So if uh, we'll double check that, and I apologize if that's wrong, but that'll be a pass interference against St. Mary's. Oh, sorry, holding on the so next. it'll be sorry, holding. So it'll be first down and ten, superior heights from the from their own 50 yard line, 49 yard line. Sorry. In senior action, the senior game will take place here at 7 o'clock tonight between these two teams. St. Mary's, uh, you know, high-powered offense, lots of flash against Superior Heights who have quite a few athletes on their team as well. Uh, Coach, what are you kind of expecting for tonight's game? Uh, for St. Mary's, I'm expecting them to, to share the ball a bit more across those receiving that receiving <laughs> core they have. I mean, they have just a wealth of weapons when it comes to their wideouts. Um, last week, obviously, Daniel Bambaco had a great game, so... Expecting to see a little bit more of the sharing of the ball there. And then with Superior Heights, obviously with the coaching staff they have there, you can expect new wrinkles, some growth, some evolution as they had last year. So 
Yeah, absolutely. Nice run again by number 64, Albert Perot. Good hard run by Albert Perot. Right up the middle. Okay. Ayanitz again in on the tackle. So sorry, we're just being told that it is Chase. Three. Sarasulo at quarterback for Superior Heights. So there was just a, a number change it looks like. Sarasulo with a pitch to Pringle. Pringle tries to get the edge, but unable to do so. A nice job by number 67 of the St. Mary's Knights. I think it was 67. It's tough to tell, but they don't have a 67 on their roster. So, But that's uh, it's exactly what we were just talking about, like Coach. Cole is that, oh, that was Cole and Curl, 87, yeah. Knights. Just like we were talking about, right? It's tough to get that edge, and, and teams are really focused on taking away Lost the outside and taking away the edge, and that was a prime example. Yeah, there was a time where football in this city, if you got that DN <laughs> cut yeah. off, there was Third no down other superior. downflow. But linebackers have gotten so much more well coached in our city that you do have that fill. So you have to make two blocks to get that edge now. Yep. Big run up the middle again by Perot. Perot with the and ball again. Perot musters his Gets way close, close to, to a down first yard. down. I think he, what do you think? You think he got it? I think Stop he got it. It's going to be close, Mary's. yeah. I do love Spear Heights, how they love to incorporate the fullback as a former fullback myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I like how they're using, you know, one thing we've noticed throughout the league this year, too, is it's nice to see these big guys getting some carries, too, and having some success. I mean, Cora was using Ethan Sereo, uh, you know, probably one of the top Red three for a first down. D tackles in the league this mm -hmm. year, and they used him at fullback, and man, he was tough to take down against, uh, I think he did that against Mary, so. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Cora definitely is never afraid to, to get some of those heavy yards, right? When you think about yeah. their past with Darian Belkowski, Jacob Jurich, uh, even Scaglione at the senior level, they definitely like to incorporate those big guys and reward them for the hard work in the trenches. So, Coach, while we have a timeout here called by Superior Heights, just uh, take a little Nine bit to talk 12. about what you guys are doing at White Pines and talk about the kind of the progression and the evolution of the program, if you don't mind, and kind of what you're doing there. Yeah, well... In the early 2010s, I think it was around the time that uh, Coach Barry Russian decided that it was going to be his end of his academic career. So ever since then, I think White Pines has struggled to find that, that person who could be that stabilizing force for their program. And it reflected in their quality of play. But then also when your quality of play is not great, the players start to choose other venues too. So um, credit to all the, guys, the coaches along the way, like yourself. You were there for a bit, Bill Butler. Um, i got to give – Kudos to Marco Bernabucci, Chris Figures, Steve Nott, a lot of guys along the way who put some effort into keeping that program alive. And then the last couple of years, Cody Buzno and myself decided to, to try to put some effort into bringing some stability to that program. And we made some good strides. COVID definitely stopped that a little bit, but we were able to come back strong the first year. And that's helped us attract quality coaches like William Buzz, or Bazawa, Jacob, uh, or sorry, Jordan Robinson Wright, a lot of other coaches like that. Number 18, Ben Trevisigno again with a run up the middle. Eaten up Trevisigno by number again. four. I thought it's it was. A couple of good hard guards. Eaten up by number 40. That's Noah Boyer. Yeah, you know what? You talk about Noah it. And, Boyer, and I think the importance of Coach Bazawa is huge eight. because one From thing that and you and I have talked about this nice. before, it's the importance of having someone in the school, right? And just that mm -hmm. being able to kind of recruit the kids. And I think that that's a huge asset. Yeah, like last year we had Coach Figures and the, the fact that we realized how important that was. So when it became uh, apparent to me that Coach Basil was coming out of Teachers College and he was looking for a place to apply the trade. And off again to Trevor Uh Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. I started Number to really 50. put some effort into but trying to convince him to him choose White Pines yards. as an option. And just even yeah. with his, uh, his First Nations background, what an important part that is for our school too, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, uh, it's great to see in... in We've been talking about it for years, the importance of having that fourth team in the, in the high school division, right? So, yeah. you know, it's super important. It's nice for the superior. kids, and, and uh, it'll be nice when this kind of evolves to the senior loop as well. Yeah, should be next year. Sarah Sulo, under center here. Again, four superior heights. Hand off to Trevis and you, and Ken LeBlanc just He's swallows them up. Ken, Ken LeBlanc. LeBlanc has really opened up some eyes going into this season for this junior team. 
you know, not much. I personally didn't know much about him, but, uh, you know, covering a few of these games and even against Cora, he was all over the field and, you know, easily one of the best players on that defense. Yeah, I got a chance to coach Kent in uh, last year at Bobcats when we had that program rolling. And he was a year younger than the older kids, so I saw the potential coming. Last year, even as a grade 9, he had an impact. So no surprise to me that his summer with Sabercats has really turned him into a star. Sarasulo under center. Another handoff. Oh, and there's a ball fumble. Albert Perot gets the ball knocked away. Somewhere in that mass. They're fighting for it. And I'd be shocked if Superior Heights was able to come up with that, but that'd be... Yeah, it is St. Mary's football. So St. Mary's, Mary's will take over first down and 10 from looks like. Nate their Warren. own 40-yard line. 39-yard line, sorry. You know, for Superior Heights, though, Coach, I mean, you have to be kind of happy with that drive, right? You were able to... I think I mean, they picked up thir St. three St. first downs. They ate up... Their own. Quite a bit of that quarter, and Superior Heights has been on offense has been on the field more than the Mary's offense. Which you know, if you were to tell me that before the game, I uh, I'd be a little surprised. So you know, Superior Heights has to be happy. Yeah, you wanted to see response from them after the way the game went last week, and you definitely have gotten that from them. Big run hard up the middle there. Hey, hands off to Reve. To Cole Reve. Picks up six yards. That's, uh, you know, watching St. Mary's last week against Cora, watching them today, it's no secret what they want to do, right? They want to pound the rock up the middle. And they had, you know, Cora, obviously everyone knows how strong Cora is, but St. Mary's had a ton of success pounding the ball up the middle against Cora. Yeah, it just came down to attrition, as it often does with Cora. Late in the second half, it's just some opportunities popped for Cora, and that was really what decided that game. Big stop there by number 47, G. Oh. We had this happen last game. It's not Jaden Caldwell. It's uh, I'll have to get his name again at halftime. Jaden Caldwell. That's a heck of a play. On the tackle for Superior. By Superior Heights. Yeah, Jaden Caldwell. I coached him this summer. He's a big lineman, so I know that that's not uh, <laughs> that's yeah. not Jaden. Uh, I believe this would be the last play of the quarter. That'd be a quick physique. Turn yeah, around. yeah, yeah. And Jaden's a great lineman. He's going to be an absolute stud out there. So. Um, you know, I'm sure he likes to hear his name every so often, but yeah. <clears throat> Hayes. Back to pass. Hayes with a bomb down the field to Carrillo, and that's incomplete. Number 87, Cohen Carrillo almost grabs it. The pass is incomplete. Hayes with a, shows off that arm strength, and, you know, that's one of those plays. I know that uh, I know he's going to think about that, but... If he would have taken that extra half second, set his feet, he had him gone there, you know. The that was a heck quarter, of a throw. Sides. And what a uh, – that's the talent that Hay Hayes has, though. I mean, Just a reminder, folks, Canteen he can read the plays and he can like throw, snacks. right? He absolutely yeah. can. And one thing we haven't seen a lot of him yet is his speed. He can run. He is, a, he is an absolute threat with the ball, too. Yeah, and I, I'd be curious to see that evolution. I, even with us, with Garen Pine at White Pines, last year we really tried to evolve him as a pocket passer and – as you get to know the kid more, you start to feel more comfortable opening up that playbook. Sometimes you want to preserve your quarterback early in the year, though, right? Absolutely. Yeah, he, you know the importance Four of them, right? Four for the Knights. We noticed, actually, that last yesterday. Uh, for the, What a boot that was. Oh. Nice kick. Nice kick by Carello. Oh, by number 39, Nick Deering. And Nick Deering with a return. Heck of a special teams tackle there by Boyer. There is a flag on the play. We did talk about that during your game yesterday. I was only here for a quarter of it, but it seemed like you guys were trying to Take not run boss, Pine you know, as tackle. much as like, uh, yeah, as in the first game, and I don't know play. if that was by design or not, but, you know, we were talking about that. You know, he's an absolute stud for you guys and maybe try to protect him a little bit more. Yeah, it's two-handed uh, a reasoning, right? One, you don't want to wear him out and not have him ready for the playoffs, which are the games that really matter. But yep. two, we also have just so many weapons. We don't want to just focus on relying on him you really want to develop that core around him for later in the season, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you got uh, Dan Daniel Pine on your team too. You're playing running back for you guys. Yep. We have uh, some great uh, wing athletes too in the Shoba Moore, Ethan yeah. McCorkle, Adam Hassan, Nicholas Ludit. Um, Hass Hassan's an outstanding story. You're gonna have to tell us a little, tell us that story uh, Looks sometime. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have time later on uh, when there's on the timeout that comes up. But yeah. But, yeah, Dan I Pine a, coached uh, him this summer, too, and we were trying to get him to play running back Sorry, all summer penalty. long. And he just uh, – he liked playing safety, so we left mm -hmm. him back there. And nice to see him playing running back now and kind of – I think he has 
massive potential Off as a grade nine time. athlete. I think he uh, first down, first he could be beer. quite the player down the road, without a doubt. On their own forty-eight. Sarah Sulo takes the snap, pitches it back to Pringle. Pringle tries to get to the Sulo right side. Hands it off. And he's swallowed up. To Dax Pringle. Yeah, like I was saying, if you want that edge, it's not just Carter a matter Evil. of cracking that DM anymore. You really have to have Sorry. design help on that edge. Get to that outside Cole linebacker, Curl, get to that DB. Because guys are taught to just crash down in angles, right? It's almost like you can't get too far outside, right? It's almost like you want to run off tackle, right? That's where the success rate seems to be in this league if you're going to, right? Because to your point, it's really difficult to get that edge on the outside. Yep. Cora runs a, an outstanding game running off tackle. Like, it's, it's, it's impressive to see with their blocks. Well, and they spend a lot of time with their running backs, making sure they use those cutback lanes, use yeah. their blockers to their ability. Sarasulo takes the handoff. Oh, he, sorry, he takes the stab, and he's back to pass. And he has a res two receivers there, Zolo's and it somehow pass. goes right Intended in between them. Six. It goes Will right Madaw. in between Will Madaw and number 56, Emerson Scott, and it falls incomplete. Uh, St. Mary's is really trying to take that middle of the field away from them after they got us on a couple of plays in that spacing Pass last week. By so it'll be third down and, and Boyer, 13 with 10.54 to play here in the second quarter. 0-0 zero, zero is the score. For Superior. Mada in motion. Sarasulo takes the snap, and what a rush by the Knights, and the Trisola ball's found, knocked out incomplete. Iodence with the pressure. The ball out of his hands as he's you could see the blitz coming from the left the side, throw, called by the, the Mary's coaching staff. Down and long for Superior Heights. Hey, William Ledence is really starting to show some stuff here. I haven't really noticed him this point in the year, but what a what a first part of the game he's having. Yeah, last game too, he uh, he made a few plays, or uh, you know, throughout the game that really kind of. <laughs> we, we all looked at each other like, holy geez, where did this kid come from? And uh, and you're right, he's kind of continued that momentum a little bit more consistently here. But that combination of Iodence and uh, LeBlanc is pretty dangerous on that line for the uh, St. Mary's Knights, oh, that's for sure. To receive for the Knights. Yeah, my apologies for mispronouncing his name there. I read Ladoz. Oh, that's okay, yeah. What a boot that was, too. I don't. I got to get nice the name of it. Oh, and there's a fumble. And Cole Rive on the recovery. What an outstanding kick. I didn't see the number of who the kicker is, but that's an absolute. Oh, that's Dax Pringle as well. So that's a nice weapon to have if you're uh, superior heights, that's for sure. Yeah, you have to really commend them for their control of the field and the time of possession so yeah. far today. They've done a great job that way. Ball is recovered by number 30, Cole Reve. That'll set a so first and 10. St. Mary's first. will take over, nice. first down and 10 from their own 38-yard line with 10.07 to play here in the second quarter. Hayes with a pitch to the outside. I think that's Primo with Quick it. little pitch, looks like it went to Bo Primo. Primo picks up about four yards. And he's wrapped up by a hoist of Superior Heights Steelhawks. We're going to say wider, number 63 with the tackle. Yeah, it looks like we got a man down here on Superior Heights. Host of other staff. Superior Heights players. Okay. We do have an injury timeout. <laughs> out. Yeah, one thing we talked about uh, earlier on a lot this season was, if you remember last year, it seemed like you uh, we were talking about the senior games. You know, the first three senior games of the season, I think the ambulance was called to the field, you know, six or seven times, right, for mm -hmm. serious, serious injuries. And we saw that, you know, quite a bit last year. And we think that was a kind of a testament to, you know, these kids not doing anything for two years, basically, right, not being able to hit, that type of stuff. And you, it's just funny to see that this year, you know, there's been some bumps and bruises and things like that. There's been a couple, like, injuries. But you ha we haven't seen anything to the, um, you know, the level that we saw last year. I just want to get your take on that. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we saw a bit of that in the NFC at the men's level, too. Quite a bit more of, uh, of bangs and bruises, injuries, especially related to knees and uh, ankles. No doubt having time off for two years for, for kids this age is a big impact. There's also just a the legitimate chance that it was just free timing and, and bad luck. Um, but no doubt, a limited activity certainly doesn't help keep your, your ligaments and your muscle structure strong, right? Yep. During the senior game. I 
was going to ask you something on the next uh, stoppage, and I forgot what it was. What was I going to ask? Adam you? Hassan. Oh, Hassan. That's yeah, right. Tell yeah. tell us about the Adam Hassan story. Yes. <laughs> uh, so Adam is um, a newcomer to Canada. Second and six for the He nights. briefly had a stop in the states with his family. He's uh, recently new to Sault Ste. Marie. Very little football background, very little football IQ at this point. Only practiced with us for a couple of days, so we really limited him to just a, a play or two. And, uh, you know, he, he does have a minor language barrier. His English is pretty good, all things considered, but there is some time that we have to spend with him. So we used him in the Spear Heights game, used him uh, sparingly throughout it, a little bit more in the second half. His first rep was a fumble <laughs> uh, and miscommunication there. So we ended up giving him a bit of time to, to think about it, put him back in a quarter later. And he ripped off a 45-yard touchdown in a second career high school rep. Yeah, so. <laughs> it was awesome to watch. Yeah, it was amazing. And there's a handoff by the Knights, and I believe that's Noah Boyer over to the left side with the biggest gain we've seen today. And we there's a the flag play, on the play as well. Noah Boyer. Noah Boyer picks up, call it 25 or so. It'll be first down in 10 Knights. Tackle by number yeah, eight, seven. Such a young player, but he's also so big, so physical. He has some natural abilities that you just can't teach in a kid. And uh, for us to have that in uh, grade nine, and for this to be what he's like with such a raw understanding of run. football, we're really excited about his future. First down, yeah. flying on the we were up here when he when he <laughs> got that second carry and that run he made, and we were just losing our minds because we're like, what a you know, nice to see, right? We didn't even know his story. We just knew that he fumbled the first time he touched the ball, yeah. and then, bam, he rips that off, right, which was awesome. So there's a 15-yard face, face mask down. penalty, so a rough play against Superior Heights. So that's a huge swing in momentum here in field position Puts for the, the Knights. The it's about way. a 35-yard change in field, so it'll be... First and 10 St. Mary's with 9.26 to play in the second quarter. Hayes with another handoff up the middle to Boyer. Boyer with a couple nice cuts. And there is a late flag Boyer on the play. Carry. We do have a flag on the play. I'm not sure what the flag would be. That was a late call yeah, by the, from the far line side judge. The yeah. We'll see what the call is here. Tackle by number 62. A hold against St. Mary's. Looks like Grayson Monario. So that'll be a 10-yard penalty. That negates the big run by Boyer. I'm not sure if they're going to call it from the spot of the foul or if they're going to call it from... Where the play started, it should be from where the play started. So technically, it should be first and twenty for Marys. Yeah, it looks like Hazelton's marking it at about the four, 35 yard line. So we do have a hold against tonight. Yeah, the one thing too that we've noticed, and you know, we've talked a lot about the runs up the middle and that type of stuff, and how that's been successful this year, and be a ten -yard things cover. like that. That is also a testament to the linemen, down. right? Obviously, the linemen in this league. Um, you know, it's it's always tough to find good old linemen, but the, with the way the teams are running hard up the middle, I mean, it is nice to see that the lines are able to kind of hold up as Hayes is back to pass here. Hayes has all day, and now you're going to start to see his running abilities. And oh. Hayes with a nifty little move there. On Hayes with a little stutter step. He stops and starts. On number 52, Drayden Brock. But yes. that's yeah, that's the ability of uh, of Alex Hayes running the ball. <laughs> yeah, he looks very confident, very composed, not yeah. rushing his decision making. Tackle. Yeah, beautiful. Really, really froze the guy in front of him there for a good second. Yeah, he was able to kind of pick up an extra three or four yards. So you know, first down and twenty, and you break that down now to second down and twelve. That's all you can ask for if you're the Knights coaching staff. <clears throat> but good decision by Hayes too, right? He didn't see anything downfield. He had some pressure, able to tuck and run. Hayes looks to roll out to his right. Hayes throws on the run. Hayes and nice defense there by number 39, Nick Deering. Intended, intended for number 84, Amari Valente Botang. For Botang. Excellent defensive play. Botang is someone that the Knights haven't really got going quite yet. Um, you know, I know Botang has a ton of ability. He's fast as can defense. be. Nick and uh, there's Terrific lots of high play. hopes for Boateng going Passes forward. I think, you know, third and long. by by the end of the season, this is his first time playing football. I think by the end of the season, you're going to see him become a real weapon for this Knights team. 
Yeah, that's the real joy of watching junior football. You get to see kids evolve. There's no pressure to be immediately productive. It's hard to learn football at the senior football level, but in junior, you have plenty of opportunity for growth. He's one of those kids I feel like we'll be talking about in another, you know, four years or three years as, as a heck of a player. And there's Hayes with a beautiful rollout. Nice pass, hey, pass to again. number 31, Liam Ouellette. Looks like he was 10 to number 31, Liam Ouellette. That's close to a he first down. I'm not sure if he quite got there. Looks like it's going to mark just short. Yeah, it'll be just short, so Ethan it'll be Fisher fourth down for and two, we'll call it, from up here. Fourth down and three, maybe, with 8.05 to go in the second quarter. This is a huge play here for the Knights. I mean, if, if you're the Steelhawks and you can somehow get a stop fourth here, that's going to be a massive momentum swing. You have to figure it's going to go to Boyer right up the middle here, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As Boyer lines up at the fullback position, and there's the handoff to Boyer right up the middle, and he's Hand touched to, looks like early, Boyer. and that's going to be awfully close. Great job by the Steelhawks. I think he might have got the first down, but again, Steelhawks deserve some credit there. That's uh, not an easy play. By the Steelhawks. Yeah, it looks like we got it there. Oh, it looks like they're going to we'll bring in the uh, bring in the stick to, to measure it. Measure. I mean, from. Where we are, it still looks like he has it by, I don't know, we'll have to see. But with 7.37 to play in the second quarter, this is a huge call in this football game as St. Mary's is marching down the field with an opportunity to break the goose eggs. Yeah, what a great response by St. Spear Heights. Um, certainly they haven't started the way that they were hoping to this season with such a young roster, but... This is a great statement against a team that looks pretty good on the St. Mary's side. Yeah, absolutely. What, uh, who do you guys have next week? You guys have? Uh, we're back around in the second half of the schedule. We'll get St. Mary's the next Thursday. Okay. So obviously, you know, you're a football guy in this city doing a lot for the for football. Um, you know, you, you know a lot about Huron Heights and you've heard about this team and kind of the mystique behind Huron Heights and how they're in town this weekend. Kind of talk about here on Heights and kind of what you're expecting to see tomorrow uh, in that game as it looks like Mary's gets enough for the first down. Yeah, they're definitely a bit first different down, than St. what Mary's. we're accustomed to up here in Sault Ste. Marie, Northern Ontario. Uh, with Southern Ontario, just because of all the proximity issues you have, there are a lot of teams that lose Either regional way, rights. So what they end up having to do is become a, a traveling team. And uh, here on Heights have qualified for the last few offices based off strength of schedule alone. They travel to a lot of the competition. So... They have players not just from their region, they're from surrounding regions. They have a lot of uh, apparent and booster funding from what I understand. So it's a, a great test for Cora to see where they stack up when it comes to the, the provincial powerhouses. What are your expectations for tomorrow? I mean, I know you have to, I'm not asking you to call a winner or anything like that, but um, I'll just say this. Do you think the game's close? Uh, I do. They both have a similar style. They're very run heavy, very aggressive and physical in the trenches. Um, just based on their level of competition, I expect Huron Heights maybe to be the favorite, but I wouldn't put a past core to make it a game. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that tomorrow for sure. Ian Stubbington there with a run picks up two yards or picks up a yard. One thing I liked about that run about Stubbington was, you know, Stubbington could have gone outside and probably lost yards, but he planted his foot, put his head down, and was able to fall forward for at least a yard. So that's a, a nice move by Stubbington. Um, a young man who's relatively new to football, so nice job there. Yeah, you like to see that vision and awareness in a young player. Hayes takes the snap. Hayes back to pass. Hayes looks. He think he has Carrillo, and that's good for the touchdown. Cohen Carrillo. Cohen Carrillo hauls it in. Rakes in the 30-yard pass by Alex Hayes, who dropped that in there absolutely perfectly. Beautiful throw by Hayes. And the Knights jump out to a 6 nothing lead. Yeah, what a great job with that teardrop pass by Hayes. And what concentration on the catch to look over your shoulder, keep running, finish it with two hands on the ball. Yeah, nice. Yeah, DeMarco to kick for it's a tough Mary. catch too, right? He was kind of had to look over his opposite shoulder there as Mary's for up. the kick. And the kick, kick is good. by number 37, Seven Ethan Agawa, is good. So with 6.44 to play in the second quarter, the St. Mary's Knights jump out to a 7-0 lead on a 28-yard touchdown pass by Alex Hayes to Cohen Carrillo. Yeah, and to your point, anyone who maybe has never played the game, um, they don't understand the, the dynamics of having to turn your head 
with your helmet and shoulder pads, <laughs> look up in the air while keeping a full sprint going. That's just great concentration on that play. Yeah, absolutely. It was a nice play, and uh, and that's what you want. So, Coach, I'm going to give you a chance here quickly to uh, talk a little bit about your work with the Sioux Steelers organization and, and kind of what's been going on with them as well. I know you guys are doing some uh, exciting things, and as a former player, it's beautiful to see. So talk a little bit about what you're doing with that organization. Yeah, when, when I say like myself, um, there's Caldwell. a lot of components involved in that too. Obviously, Daryl Wood this year coming on board to help with the leadership was a massive boost. Uh, Steve Heima, who's still a captain and a player on the team, it plays a major role in that too. But uh, when I decided to walk away from the Steelers, it took a couple well, of years away. Tang. Barry Russian and Paul Caldick in that group. I think that they had a, they'd really run the end of their rope when it comes to the amount of dedication they could give in one career. So they asked for some new leadership to step in, and Deering that's where we're at right now. Deering with a big run and nice coverage, beautiful coverage by the St. Mary's line. Knights, number 28, or sorry, number... 38, uh, Cody Luzinski like Gavin Darlow. on the stop. So go on, go on, coach. Uh, keep going with what you were saying, sorry. Yeah, so so uh, just the fact that we have so many guys on staff now right, who've done a Cody great job Luzinski. having an established relationship with the Sabercats, um, established coaches and, and leaders on the team who have a strong connection with high school football. That's something that needed to really be brought in with uh, Paul and Barry, getting a little bit older and not having that connection to Sabercats in high school like they once did, so... It's been great to have that influx of young talent. It's great to have Brandon Lewis back at the helm. Obviously, you want your face of the franchise leading the way. So we have a great leadership group now. We have a great young core of players who are helping us turn that corner. And this year was a great turning uh, step forward for our program. Oh, it's, it's amazing to watch. I absolutely love it. And I, uh, I often joke with Haima because, uh, you know, Haima played football for me his first year ever playing. A couple of yards. And uh, Haima always bugs me to come back and play for one more season. Yeah. And I always tease Haima. I tell Haima, if you, you can get 15 Mary's. kids that I used to coach that are playing, I said I might come out for a game or two. Yeah, we, we have to be getting close now, <laughs> I know. It's, yeah. it's, uh, that, that's the scary thing. That makes me <laughs> feel old when I start to get there. And it's like, oh, we're close. Yeah. yeah. But no, it's 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 great to see kind of the revitalization, and, and uh, I definitely definitely know that your efforts are appreciated. So thank you for all that, and, yeah, and uh, looking forward to kind of seeing that that program and that team uh, continue its success and, and continue the history. As beautiful play by Cole Rive as he takes on the block 30, and Dax eats Pringle. up Dax Pringle in the backfield. By Cole Rive. Yeah, you talked earlier about that edge setting. There was a block to That'll cut back up. <laughs> Sometimes with young kids, they see those three yards and. They think that there might be seven yards outside, and they try to bounce it out. Loss of a couple uh, yards. But the speed 11. of the game, the players that you have who start to close in on you, they definitely set a new edge, and it's not always there when you think it is. Yeah, Cole Rive with a with a beautiful play, and I believe he's – did they just take him – oh, he's, they, they got him playing corner right now, sorry. So he's playing corner over here and playing some fullback for this Knights team. And Cerullo back to pass, and he's hit as he throws. Cerullo hit as he throws. Nice the pressure on the play by Carrillo. I got to give Cerullo some credit, though, man. He's sitting in there. You know, he's he's taking some shots, but he's not scared, and he's still trying to deliver the ball. And, um, you know, been impressed by his toughness here today. Yeah, absolutely. They're, he's really committed to keeping that uh, the dual threat offense going, and that's pretty important to keep the see, offense moving Cole later on. Carrillo with the pressure for St. Mary's. 4.45 to play here in the second quarter. St. Mary's Knights will be accepting Spirit the punt, punt here. This might be a quick punt here. Quick kick. Pringle with a kick. Carrillo back to receive. Carrillo takes it on the hop. That'll be a... F oh, they're not going to call no yards. That's all right. So Carrillo with a couple nice moves. Carrillo cuts back to his left side, and he's brought down by number 39, kick. Nick Deering. Thankfully, Deering came from behind and was able Cole to take Carrillo. down Carrillo because Carrillo had some blockers up there. St. Mary's yards. will It'll take over first, ten, first down and 10 from Superior from Heights. About the 48-yard yard line of Superior Heights. 48-yard line with 4.23 to play. Nick Deering tackle on the play for Superior Heights. You know, the one thing about this Mary's offense is they're very methodical with what they do, right? They don't really have necessarily that big play running back yet that it seems like other teams have or that big play guy. But they're able to pick up three, four, five yards on most plays just like hard that. You know, a good hard run up the middle. I believe that was Rive. Able to pick up three or four yards or maybe two yards on that one. But uh, but that's kind of what they do. 
and uh, and it's almost like, hey, listen, this is what we're going to have to do to succeed, and they're doing a, a really nice job of it. Yeah, and sometimes as a, a coach on the opposite side, that's almost Double more frustrating because it really wears down your defense a bit. And if you do have a player playing both ways or a handful of players playing both ways, that definitely takes its toll throughout the game. Absolutely. As Hayes now takes the snap under center again. Hayes rolls to his left. Hayes with a little dump pass. A nice diving catch there by Hayes pass caught by number 31. 31, Liam Ouellette. So Liam in Ouellette? The, in Can the, the difference between Canadian and American football. Five, and six yards, Liam, third down and Liam caught the ball but was down on the ground and he got up and tried to run with it and was a little confused as to why he couldn't. If your knee's down in Canadian, or in this league anyway, you are considered down. You don't have to be touched. Whereas in the NFL, if you're down, you have to be touched. So that's the difference for the viewers. Hayes with a handoff right up the middle to Rive with a beautiful cut and another cut. And he gets to the outside. Rain. And Cole Revey takes it to the house touchdown, for Mary's. the touchdown to extend the lead by six. Yeah, and you were talking about running up the middle and how effective that is. Right there is a perfect example. When you run up the middle, that's when you get to the second level, you can really do some damage because you've beaten that initial contain design, right? Yeah. And that's the one thing. I worked. We worked quite a bit with Cole this summer and all of our running backs about getting those five, six yards straight up field, and then you can look to get to the outside. So that was always a rule, and it was nice to kind of see, you know, Cole actually listen there and, and do that. So <laughs> it was kind of – it's nice to see Cole having some success here at this level, and the extra point's good. I'll tell you this. Cole this summer – Kick is up and good. He didn't play running back for us because we had Cohen Menchelenko and we had some other good players back there. But he played fullback, and he he was the the best blocking fullback I've seen in the last you know probably five or six years in our league, and now he's out here just absolutely dominating as a grade nine in junior football. So really nice to see. Yeah, you love to see that hard work with the the little gritty work being paid off with opportunities and touches, and especially to good kids, right? And yeah. you want to see that, so that's nice. One thing, John, that we talk about, coach, that we talk about quite a bit as well is. I don't know what it is, but, you know, you look at these kids when the Sioux Minor football season ends and then when high school starts, and there's only a month. It's the month of August. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happens to these kids throughout that month of August, but it's almost like they're, it's almost like they grow six inches <laughs> and they learn how to play so football when, you know, when they weren't playing. And, and there's just something about that development years. over that span, and you look and you're like, where was this a month ago, you know? And, yeah. and it's crazy to see yeah, you know, a couple of guesses. They get to sleep in more in August than they do in July. <laughs> that helps with the growth, no doubt. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, it, it's kind of neat to see. So, you know, at White Pines, you guys have – how many people do you have on the roster this year? Number 84. Uh, right Martin, now I think we're at 31 healthy. Kick off for St. So you're at 31. That's the most, you know, White Pines has had in a number of years. You guys are practicing with some grade 11s, correct? Yeah, yeah, they definitely Which help awesome. us each day. Pringle with a great return. There is a flag on the play. Big we'll see what that is. Run back for Superior Heights. Yeah, obviously next year is a big year for our field. program. We want to bring Somewhere back senior 40, football. 49 yard line. Run out of bounds. And uh, with senior imminently coming next year, we want to make sure that our 11s are also learning the systems, the verbiage that we're implementing. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that they still are active in the game of football because that's a very important part to development as well. And we're really excited to say that we didn't have a single transfer out from that grade 11 group this year. So That's amazing. That's, we'll, a, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. So we should have a decent roster next year. Obviously, they'll be young compared to their competition. But got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the difference this time, as opposed to all the, the Band-Aid solutions we had in senior and years past, is we have 20 to 30 football players now. Exactly, yeah, so. which is nice. You know, I, I remember when I was there, you know, football was always kind of so the secondary sport for the basketball back players. Back you know, White Pines always had a, has a strong basketball team. And uh, speaking of basketball and, f and, uh, and players, back inside their own 30. Um, I want you to – can you talk a little bit about Loudit? Nick yeah. Loudit for your team. Uh, I just I, – I, so I called quite a few high school games last year for basketball and noticed him, and he was a heck of a basketball player. I, ex I actually thought he was in grade 10. So to see him out here playing now as a grade 10 playing football, just talk a little bit about him as an athlete and kind of what he means to your team. Yeah, last year we were going to use him a lot more, but he unfortunately suffered a, a wrist injury the second week of the season. So we didn't get him back till about the playoffs. Good hard run. And uh, I don't know if you recall, but 
he ended up actually uh, scoring the final touchdown of the season for us last year in Looks the playoff like game against Flores. Yep. So Four. Albert Pro again. We, uh, we know he's an explosive athlete. We know he's tough as nails. He's always willing to learn. Super coachable kid. Tackle. So he'll have a long future in multiple sports, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice to see, and you want to see that, you know, nice, nice to see that success, and nice to see those great athletes, too, uh, you know, playing multiple sports, which is important. Superior Heights, able to pick up seven yards on that play, so it'll be second down and three with 230 to pl 2.33 to play here in the second quarter. And there's a big hole up the middle by Superior Heights. Perot with a, a big more. run, but he's brought down by Shawana. You could have drove a truck through that hole, Coach. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That helps when you have we a big man moving Shawana. his feet, getting his shoulders low. Yeah. Has his own cheering section here today. Superior Heights trying to get a little bit of momentum back here. And on a tackle for St. Mary's, that'll set up first and 10 from the 45. First down and 10 from the Superior Heights 45-yard line. Sarah Sulo takes the snap. Hands that off to Trevis Good Trevisigno. hard run by him. Good eight yard run. He picks up another seven yards. Looks like 39. Gonna have to fight. I've coached the kid all Mary's. year and I still Tyler can't pronounce Katie, his last, you know, I hear people pronounce his last name three different ways all the time, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Second down and three. Doesn't matter. He can play football. So <laughs> yeah, it's one of those names you're better off to reference one of the parents. Exactly. For it, right? Exactly. Sarah Sulo, quick handoff up the middle again to number 64, run, Albert Perot. Not over first and yardage. did he get the first? Yeah, I think he did. Eh? They're yeah, gonna give it to like him. Should be able to so yeah. Perot with a first run. down. 31 again. Liam Good drive here for Superior Heights with 145 to play. Question is, are they going to be able to get a big play where they can get a big chunk of yardage here somehow to try and score here before half? Yeah, what a great weapon that would give Coach Kluster in that huddle at halftime if they were able First to score here and yeah. light some fire 54. on him. Marys comes out with the five-man line. Cerullo back to pass, and he's got guys open. He's got a wide pass. open, number six, Madal with a beautiful catch. And just like we talked Drive about, Coach, six, there's the He's big play that they asked down. for. Way downfield by number 37, Ethan Aguilar. Yeah, great aggressiveness. Was that number six? Will have a first down. Number six, Somewhere Will Madal the with the catch. Yeah, yeah. yeah, great aggressiveness Excellent on that battle on his route. There was a player trying to punt, bump him off his route. He stayed on it. His defender ended up being the one to knock himself off. And then you end up the big play downfield in red zone territory. Huge momentum here going into the half. And what a play by Cerullo. Kind of rolls out a little bit to his right and throws it on a dime. Great play there by Superior Heights. That With 122 to play in the first half, Superior Heights looking to counter. Oh, and there's a fumble the up the middle. And it's recovered the by the recovered Knights. By Knights. Number yeah. 71. We Albert Perot Cerullo. and Cerullo unable to connect on the handoff. And that's a huge turnover for the St. Mary's Knights. Yeah, it's crushing for Superior Heights. You had so many good things going for you on that drive, and fundamentals betray you there at the very end. Yeah, and you know what? That's just a young team, right, trying to, trying to find their way again. And, you know, you kind of have to learn how to win in this league, and you kind of have to learn how to score. And, you know, they'll be better for it. I have no doubt that. Perot, who's had a heck of a football game here today, he'll bounce back from that no problem at all. And, uh, you know, this is a big play here for Superior Heights, you know, defensively. If they, you know, you turn Same the ball Mary's over, from deep in their own end. but it's important. You don't want to let Mary score here if and you want to stay in this game. As Reve gets stopped there by a whole hoist of Superior Heights Steelhawks with 112 to play. Have an injured player down. Once again, tackle got by committee by. It looks like. Superior Heights. Yeah, it might be number three. Yeah, it looks like Cole, Cole Rive is down with 112 to play. So, Coach, just going back to the Steelers one more time, you know, you guys had quite a few players this year, quite a few commitments this year. And I found in the past, you know, a lot of kids would, or a lot of, I call, I call them kids because I, they're all still kids to me because I coach most of them, but a lot of players who have committed to the program 
But then when it really came down to it, they kind of decided to not play. I noticed last year and the year before, it's actually gone the other way. Kids are actually committing, and then okay, kids are actually the, uh, playing. Yards, uh, what kind of, you know, what have you done to kind of um, ensure that and kind of help that? Uh, that part's not so much on me. That That's more on the core leadership within the, the locker room, uh, just creating an environment in training camp where a lot of these young talents want to stick around and be a part of it. Uh, obviously, early success early on in the season draws a few more eyes and a few more commitments as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And there's Hayes. Hayes with a rollout. And Hayes, Hayes or Corello, sorry, Corello tries for, for the one-handed catch. Pass is incomplete. Hayes had Boateng on the corner route. For Heights. Boateng could have still been running, but Hayes was under some pressure. So with 54.8 seconds to play, it'll be third down and eight. But Yeah, back to that. It's, I can go out and ask all the kids who I've seen throughout the minor league program to come out and play with us. Uh, and be a part of the future. But at the end of the day, they have to see a culture that they want to be a part of. And this year, kudos to our core leaders and our captains on that team, like Fred Castleman and, and Steve Heima, for making guys want to be a part of that process. Primo like with Primo a run to the outside, and Primo stopped. So it'll be fourth down and long, uh, fourth down and we'll call it two. So Superior Heights, you know, great Taylor job Boyer. by Superior forcing St. Mary's to punt. With the tackle for Superior You would have Heights. to assume they're going to punt here. But, Time you know, you've been part of football in this town long enough, too, and, and know the junior loop where special teams are usually the last thing that a lot of teams are able to put in. So, you know, with 48.4 seconds to go here, um, you have to assume Mary's is going to punt. And, you know, anything can happen on, on, on snaps, on kicks, or anything. So opportunity here for Superior. Absolutely. Even a miscontain on the, the downfield coverage, right? There's so much danger when it comes to, to kids learning the concept of special teams at a young age. Yeah, and that's one thing, you know, uh, in Sioux Minor football that we ended up, we, we originally took punting out of Sioux Minor football, but we did put it back in for that exact reason. You know, we don't have kickoffs, we don't have things like that because we did find that there were injuries on those, so we took kickoffs out of the game. We took punts out for a little while. But we put it back in in the Bantam division for exactly the reason you're talking about, right? It's not going to, you know, you're not going to teach kids all everything, but at least they have that a little bit of experience going into high school where they at least know a little bit, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's such a valuable component that Sue Minor brings to Sioux St. Marie that I know other communities don't have. Yeah, it's a... It's a great program. We really love it, and uh, and we really appreciate the support by all other levels of football in, in the Sioux. Absolutely. It's nice. Nice snap. Nice kick. Another kick. great play. And what a catch there by, by number 39. <laughs> 39. Uh, who was that? Nick Deering. But that'll be a no-yards penalty for sure. We do have a flag on the play. So I have and a question, a, a rule question. I, I'm pretty familiar with the rules, but the one thing – I know there was a rule put in where there used to be a 5 or a 15, I believe, yard, no yards rule. I thought a few years back that they got rid of the 5 yard and every no yards rule, no yards call was a 10 yard penalty. Sorry, not 15. Penalty is no yards against St. Do you Mary's. know if they've gone back to that? Is there the 5 yard option or is it all the same now? I'm not sure. Oh, I haven't good. noticed the discrepancy between the two. I do know that they used to, like you said, have See, the five-year. Sorry, worth. 15. Yeah, so he just called a 15-yarder on that. Right. That's what I mean. So are they all 15 or some five? That was my question, yeah. Yeah, I'm not positive. The, the yeah. differentiation it's used to be uh, five oh, yards if you attempted to get out of the five-yard right. area. Uh, if you made no attempt to clear it, then it was 15 yards. And a lot of it is just, again, talking about safety on special teams. That's the big fundamental factor there on that penalty, right? Yeah, absolutely. Nice play there by Superior Heights. So they're going to tack on an extra 15 yards. So with 41.2 seconds to play, you know, Superior Heights, they got the ball first down and 10 from the Mary's 26-yard line. They have an opportunity here to get some points on the board, that's for sure. Yeah, great stop keeping St. Mary's down this end of the field, giving them an opportunity with 41 seconds on the clock to still manufacture something before halftime. So if you're the coach here, and not to uh, give away too much, but – what do you, you know? You know Superior Heights. You've seen them here. What are you looking to do? Well, I think they have a lead. I'm not sure. I haven't counted how many timeouts they have. If you have timeouts, uh, a run play with the last three minutes to go is almost the same as an incomplete pass as far as time management because the clock does stop after every play. But you certainly want to take at least one shot. You don't want to wait right till the end to do it either. Yeah, you know what? That, you know, you, you hate to be kind of repeat much in this league, but that out pass that they ran to Madaw, that was. Uh, 
beautifully done, and you kind of expect them maybe they'll try that again coming up here as that was their big play that they had. Yeah. Let St. Mary's prove they can stop it, right? Exactly. But to your point, there's a run up the middle, and Trevis and you know, and, uh, Trevis Trevis and Yo gets crushed there by Liam Dubois. What a beautiful stop by Dubois. Liam Dubois with the tackle. So it'll be second down and 10 with 37.1 seconds to play. I think there'd be a little bit more urgency here by Superior Heights, but... Yeah, this is really early season preparation second for a young team, right? Yeah. And Coach Kluster, you hear him left. over there yelling. They're able to do so. And there's a run up the middle and by Perot. Good hard run. I like that by Coach Kluster, able to kind of, you Brought know, young man just fumbled. Over first down uh, obviously probably feels bad. Give him some confidence back. And Perot comes out with a big, hard run. Timeout, St. And Mary's. he picks up, goodness, 10 yards. So close to a first down. Timeout against uh, St. Mary's here with 20.1 seconds to All play. Right, changing mind. I think Spear it's uh, Heights. Spear Heights oh, timeout Spear, here. Sorry, okay. It's the right time to use it too. You just yeah. had a big playoff or run. Give yourself some time to get everyone to the line. No rushing it. Third down, short yard situation. You looking for a run here again, or you think they're going to start uh, opening it up with a pass here to really try and get one in? Well, you certainly need a momentum boost here, right? You have 20 yeah. seconds on the clock. Maybe not so confident your kids can down the ball quick enough. I would maybe do a play action pass, look for something over the middle or towards the pylon. You know, the nice thing is, right, you can throw a pass here, say it's incomplete, you can still run a play on fourth and one. If you're able to get three or four yards, you're still going to have time for one more play because even after the buzzer goes, right, you still have a chance for one more play. So, you know, they, they realistically have the shot, have a shot here to run at three plays minimum. Uh, I don't think they have any timeouts left, but... Again, it depends. You know, you would assume that Coach Kluster right now would have called two plays in the huddle even, just in case. So we'll see what they do as they line up number 87. Oh, we don't have an 87, sorry. So, Or 82, my apologies. There he is. Uh, they got Jonah Spina lined up one-on-one -on -one down low against Cole Rive. They got a stack line Third and about one here. for the Hawks. Yeah. And there's a pass like we talked about. And he has Madaw wide Whoa, open. And did Madaw catch that? He did. He did. What a catch. Caught Can't believe. Excellent catch. He, he almost that got in there. Nice play heights. by Carrillo. Or sorry, by Sarasulo. Yeah, they have to get back to the spot Drop here. From the St. Mary's five-yard line. Yeah, not, not too sure about that defensive call there, putting you know the stack there on the fourth and short. I understand the logic, but... You know, you have to assume they would pass there or try something. Superior Heights now with it. Perot up the middle. He's got a hole. And Perot falls in for the touchdown. Number 64, Albert Perot with 6.5 seconds left. Cuts the lead to eight points. Yeah, what a great response right before halftime here by Superior Heights. Put some points up on the board. Like I mentioned earlier, gives Coach Kluster an opportunity to really rally troops there in the huddle. Gives them something to believe in there at the end. Yeah, no Extra question. Great run by Perot, and what a hole he had there. Yeah. By the, you could, you know, you could see that hole from up here. So credit to the uh, offensive line of Superior Heights. You know, it's no secret the defensive line for St. Mary's is is a strength and one of the better ones in this league. And uh, you know, they really showed their muscle early on, but Superior Heights made some adjustments to be able to kind of counter to that. So big extra point here by Pringle. Snap, Kick nice job by number good. six, Madaw, just to get that 14, snap down. Seven, six and a half seconds left in the half. And Madaw puts it through to cut the lead to seven, and that's a huge momentum swing for the Superior Heights Steelhawks. With 6.5 seconds to go, St. Mary's is going to receive the kickoff. If you're Superior Heights, are you uh, you making a short kick here, or are you booting it deep? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily boot it deep. I would try to keep it low, maybe get it to roll back, give myself time to get some wide coverage on that downfield cover, you know. Uh, definitely don't want to put it anywhere near, I guess I would say, Reve might be one of their bigger threats back there, right, if they had him as a back returner? No, not no. normally. They normally have Corello back there, I believe, so, yeah. So, Coach, just, uh, you know, it's fun. It's, it's funny when you can sit up here and kind of second guess things and kind of and look at the situations and those types of things. 
you know, what would you think of the call of uh, Mary's defense to, you know, go to that stack linebacker and go to like the, the almost like the eight-man line there on that fourth and short? Well, what you're really doing is you're putting pressure on the quarterback in that situation, right? Because yep. if it is a run play, you dare somebody, or well, you're hoping nobody makes a, a miss on their their gap, but then you also create pressure on that backfield if it is a pass. And to your point, you say it was a – What's the quarterback's name? Uh, it was uh, Sarasulo. Sarasulo. What the composure he has with that nine-man line rushing at him to be able to step up and make that throw still, right? Yeah, it was a beautiful play by him. I think he deserves a lot of credit. And, again, you know, he he had pressure in his face. Marys did a great Brian, job hey, of getting the pressure. So, And you there's see? Pringle with the short kick like we kind of talked about, and it's picked up there by the Knights. Short kick looks like he's picked up by Noah Boyer. And Boyer, well, if you're going to do a short kick, Boyer's probably not the one I would want to <laughs> no kick to, but, you know, great Tackle job by Superior Heights. And St. Mary's is going to have one last opportunity with .6 seconds on the clock. First down and 10 from and 10 St. Mary's from midfield. midfield. Right on the... We'll time to get off one play. So you have to, you know, if, if you're superior heights, I think what you're looking for is you're looking for that same play, you know, the the go route over the middle, right, with a slot back or with Carrillo or, you know, the one that they got the touchdown on. That They ran that play a couple times. Or look for Botang on a corner route here as they like to run that. Yeah, you have nothing to lose here with a deep shot. That's right. And it looks like superior heights is going to call a timeout as I think Kluster was hollering for his guys to back up and <laughs> play a few yards off the ball, but they were unable to do so. So good time old call there by Superior Heights as they try and organize their defense a little bit. Yeah, and that's a football IQ thing that comes with time as kids start to get more situational awareness. Somebody on that defense eventually starts to tell you to, to back up, to understand that nothing can get behind you, really make that quarterback sit back in the pocket and wind up. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Hayes has that arm strength. If, you know, if they're coming out in that same defensive look, you know, I, the two people you have to think are going to be Carrillo over the middle or even Botang on a go route to the outside here because he is fast and I know Hayes has an arm. So the question is, though, will, you know, will the offensive line of St. Mary's be able to kind of hold up because Superior Heights does have some pretty decent linemen in there and, and they can get that pass rush. So, It'll be interesting to see what happens here. As it looks like Superior Heights is just playing straight up defense. Yeah, it's interesting. Cover zero almost. Yep. Oh, now they're telling him to back up. So, <laughs> and there's Hayes. Hayes back on the rollout. Hayes looking to boat for Botang, but Hayes just tucks it. There we is a flag on the play. play. Hayes scampers. And Hayes gets tackled on the play by Drayden Brock. Down. We'll see what the flag is. If it is against, it is a hold against Superior Heights. Like so that will likely be Mary's, denied or declined, sorry. And that should be the end of the half with the St. Mary's Knights holding on to a 14 7 lead over Superior Heights. So, coach, before we let you go, what, do you th uh, what are your Can thoughts on the first half? Well, I love the response from Superior Heights. Um, obviously, the way that our first action. game went against St. Mary's, there was a bit of a score discrepancy there. We were playing a bit more of an experimental role with our offense. So when uh, you look at the score that we had against Superior Heights, it's easy to, to think that they weren't of the quality that we were. But I think that they had a lot of uh, opportunities missed with fumbles and turnovers. So Superior Heights certainly cleaning some stuff up here and putting on a good show. Absolutely, and so we'll be back in about 10 minutes' time with second-half action here from Superior Heights. My name's Tony Bonifero, joined along by Coach John and Jay Houselander in studio. We'll be back in 10 minutes' time with second-half action from Superior Heights.
Welcome back to Superior Heights. I'm Tony Bonifero, joined alongside Marquis Strawbridge from All the right, Cora coach, we're back. We're back Junior the team, half. along with Jay Houselander in studio. Coach Bouge is going to join us back for the fourth off. quarter, but we have Marquise joining us here for third quarter action. So, Marquise, thanks for joining me. No problem. So, you're obviously your first year playing uh, high school football here in grade nine. Uh, just kind of talk about your experience and kind of what it's been like so far up at Cora. Oh, I mean, at first it was kind of nervous, or kind of nervous, my bad. Yeah. But now I'm just chilling. I'm doing my thing. Yeah. So, so you uh, obviously played football this summer. Um, you played football and Sioux minor football for a number of years. You got to play quarterback this year. You had a heck of a season down in uh, in Sioux minor football. This year you're playing wide receiver for Cora. What kind of led to that transition? Uh, you know, I've seen you play every position, but not wide receiver yet. So what's kind of led you over to the wide receiver uh, spot? Well, basically the first day of training camp, I was doing all the position groups and everything, and then I was at the receivers and I was just making so many nice plays. So <laughs> they just put me there. Yeah, fair enough. So we're going to have Marquise with us for this half as Superior Heights will be kicking off to St. Mary's. Marquise, obviously, you know, you've played both of these teams. You've, you've competed against both of them. Pretty good game so far in this first half. Just what are your thoughts uh, from what you've seen so far? It's been close. The period had a good few pass plays. Mary's is doing their thing, though. Yeah. Uh, Mary's obviously lost Ken LeBlanc. We saw him kind of go off with an injury, so that's a huge loss for the Knights. So kind of have to see how they counter. It looks like Superior Heights is just coming right out in an onside kick with an, an onside kick formation. Surprised they're showing it so fast, but we're going to see how what Mary's does here. I think that's a that's a pretty good pretty good sign they're going to run an onside kick, eh, Marquise? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smart Looks job. Like I like this by Superior Heights, though. You might force St. Mary's to use a timeout, Max actually, really you know, before the, the second half really even starts. So Superior Heights, Pringle, will attempt the onside kick. St. Mary's, it looks like it's going to be up to Nate Morin to grab it. The kick does go 10 yards, and it's no, and it just goes off the hand of Superior Heights, and they're unable to capitalize, but... Nice play there. Nice opportunity there by the Knights. Ball did not go 10 yards. So I'm not sure what the rule would be, Marquise, if the ball actually went 10 yards and then bounced and then came back. I don't know what the rule on that would be. I'll actually have to look that up, but yeah. that was pretty close right there. So it looks like you're going to have first down and 10 St. Mary's from the Superior Heights 51-yard line going left to right here. Marquise, obviously you've played, again, like I, we've talked about, you've played against both these teams. You know, Superior Heights came out, they struggled early on. Um, you know, they lost their first two games quite handily. St. Mary's, on the other hand, came out, beat White Pines, played hard against you guys. And in this game now, it's, you know, Superior Heights is really battling and, uh, and they're in this game. What are you kind of seeing that's a little bit different from Superior Heights than what you've seen so far? Well, I noticed they changed their quarterback. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like the players are learning the game a bit more, and that's why they're doing better. Absolutely. They're getting that experience, right? Yeah, Chase Cirillo is playing a heck of a football game so far for the Superior Heights Steelhawks. So it'll be first down and 10, St. Mary's, as Alex Hayes will start off under center. Cole Rive looks, looks like he's back out there, which is a good sign for the Knights. He was a little shook up earlier. Motion to the left, or motion to the right, sorry. And Rive oh, takes Rive the handoff the to the left side, makes a few guys miss, and he falls he forward. And he picks he up about down. 20. Nice tackle on the play by Superior Heights to be able to stop him. First down and 10. It's a good start for the second half. Number 21, Chase Christie. Chase Christie Chase on the stop. Carter Nebel with the tackle. So you know quite a few of these players. Oh, they've got a little injury while we're down right now. So you know quite a few of these players, well, having have played with them over home. the years. And uh, especially last season, you know, again, Sue Minor, you and Alex Hayes, two real good quarterbacks. Uh, you, you know Hayes. You've played against him for a number of years. Kind of talk about what makes him difficult to stop at the quarterback position. Well, when I play him, it's always a challenge, especially when I went on defense for the last few games. Like, 
I don't know. He just knows his stuff. Yeah, yeah, and he's fast, eh? That's yeah. the tough part, right? So that's good. So, Marquise, obviously you're a multi-sport athlete here in Sault Ste. Marie, uh, grade 9, outstanding basketball player, outstanding football player. There was a lot of talk that you might not play football this, uh, you know, this year in high school, right, early yeah. on. What kind of led to that decision of you deciding to lace up uh, the cleats and play? Well, basically after Sioux Minor, I thought I was done, but then uh, Coach Booch called me, and so <laughs> I just tried it, but now... That's good. And they got you playing a good position, right? Where yeah. like your risk of injury and stuff is a little lower, especially with a wide receiver. So Yeah. Hayes takes the snap. Another handoff up the middle, but nice job Great by Superior Heights as they eat that yards. up. Led by number 52, Drayden Brock, and number 62 for Superior Heights, Grayson Monero. Grayson Monero, number 62 with the tackle. So short gain on the play. It'll be second down and nine for St. Mary's. Second Come back Knights, to the St. huddle. Mary's. We're going to be risking a delay a game call here by the Knights. Hayes takes the snap. Hayes rolls out to his right. He throws it up and there's a completion. There is a flag on the play. Nice Hayes tackle pass, number 31, by Liam number Lett. six. Is Will Madaw, Liam Roulette is tackled. There is a flag on Number the play. Six, Looks Madaw like it's going to be a tackle. holding call we do have a flag on the play. against St. Mary's. So that play will come back. And it'll be second down and 19. Hold on, St. Mary's. Pill will come back and it'll be second down. So, Marquise, you talked a little bit about Coach Booch and you talked about Cora and things like that. What was the biggest adjustment for you coming to high school and playing at Cora Collegiate? What was the biggest, you know, thing that you had to kind of adjust to? Well, the size of the players. Yeah. In Sioux Minor, everybody was just a foot shorter than me, but now there's kids bigger than me. So yeah. I Mar definitely had to make an adjustment to that. Yeah, for those of you that don't know Marquise, how tall are you? At 6'3"? 6'4". 6'4"? Yeah, so Marquise is 6'4". He's a big kid. And, and uh, yeah, he was he would ragdoll kids in Sioux Minor football and, you know, it's tougher to do that at this level, so, yeah. yeah. Hayes with it now. Hayes takes the snap for Marys. Second and 20. And he rolls to his left. Hayes looks. He finds Hayes his receiver. Nice pass. And he takes it up the sidelines. And nice Liam Roulette picks up about another, probably, oh, that's a 30-yard gain. It'll be first down and 10 St. Mary's from the Superior Heights 15-yard line. Big play there. Nice ball from Alex. Yeah, beautiful throw rolling out to his left. Hits Ouellette in stride. We've got another player down, it looks like. So, Marquise, you talked about the kind of like the, the transition and the players just being a little bit bigger, right? Dear, at at, at Cora and things like that. Excellent. Obviously, Touchdown, the football program at, at Cora is a huge deal. What what makes Cora's football program kind of what it is, in your opinion? What what kind of makes it the, uh, the uh, you know, the... the, the We'll call it the elite program here in Sault Ste. Marie because they've won so many city championships recently. Just the coaching staff. Like, everybody's just so good. They work us and everything. And also, every good player goes there. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you guys have a lot of talent. But it's absolutely it's a testament to the job that the coaching staff does there. And um, have, Were you involved in their workout program at all in the off season? No. No? I wish I was, though. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll be, it'll be scary watching you if, uh, you know, you start doing that workout program, too. It'll be nice to see. So, yeah. No, that's great. It's uh, it's nice. For those people thinking about playing high school football, what's the time commitment like? And what's the uh, what's the commitment to play? Well, for Cora specifically, we're, at, we're on the field every day after school. You might get one day off every few weeks, but, um, yeah. For a couple hours, is it? Uh, Three hours, like how long? We start at 2.45, and then we get off around 5, 5.30 latest. Okay, fair enough, yeah. yeah. So has it been quite an adjustment? Uh, it's got to be long days for you now, eh? Yeah, they're really long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good. You're able to balance school and everything okay with, yeah. with football? That's good. So St. Mary's takes over, first down and 10. Or sorry, it'll be uh, second down and 10. First and 10. Oh, it is first and 10, that's right. 15-yard line of Superior. With 9.29 to play in Alex the third quarter. Hayes hands it off up the middle to Rive, hands and Rive gets Rive. eaten up by number 62, Grayson, 62 Marie, Grayson, Grayson Monero. Uh, Monero, sorry. 
Grayson Monero played a heck of a game against you guys last time you guys played, and that combination of him and Wyatt Herb at D-tackle are, uh, are pretty dangerous. Yeah. No gain on the play. You guys have pretty good D tackles at uh, Cora too, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hayes with it. Carrillo in motion to the left. Hayes rolls to his left. He finds Carrillo, and Carrillo gets swallowed up by Drayden Brock and number 21 of Superior Heights, Chase Christie. A little bit of help from Chase Christie, it looks like. Chase Christie, man, that makes me feel old. So I used to, way back in the day, I used to work in uh, at a daycare here in the Sioux on Dacey Road for Child Carol Goma. And Chase Christie was about one or two years old back then. So <laughs> I've known Chase for a number of years. And I won't embarrass him with any, uh, any daycare stories, but I have a few for him. So <laughs> and here's Hayes now. He takes the handoff. And Hayes back to pass. He looks over the Hayes middle. Up the middle on and third down. Incomplete pass as it falls just short. And Chase Christie is dad. Alex was a heck of an athlete back like in the day as well. So four. nice to see Chase out here playing some football. Chase Christie defending the play. That'll set up fourth and so, long. Marquise, we've talked a little bit about Huron the Heights coming to Sault Ste. Marie. You know, obviously you know quite a bit about Huron Heights and and uh, and kind of the excitement that's kind of building around Cora. Just talk a little Ethan, bit about what you ahead. expect from that game tomorrow. Well, hopefully Try it's a good game, but I've seen a lot from here on Heights, and they're, they're looking good. But I feel like we can come closer, maybe even pull up the W. That'd be awesome. Be be exciting, and it'd be a big deal for Sault Ste. Marie football, that's for sure. Put us on the map. So we have a field goal attempt here by Agawa on fourth down and 15. This will be a... 15-yard field goal attempt. Hold is down. Kick is up, kick is and up. the kick is short. Kick is short and wide. And Superior, Superior Heights Superior able to pick it up, out. and they get it out of the end zone, and Boyer Tackle on the stop. The one yard line. He gets just out of the end zone. But he is out of the end zone onto the one-yard line. So Saint Mary, or sorry, Superior Heights will take over first down and 10, only down by seven points, Marquise. Jacob Nelson. So far. Yeah. Runs it out of bounds. So if you're, by Noah Boyer. if you're Superior Heights, you know, you've kind of gotten off to a slow start this season. St. Mary's has come out pretty strong all year long. Superior Heights is right in this football game. You know, you're coming out here now with down by seven points with seven minutes to go. What are you kind of so hoping to do if you're Superior? Ball is advanced. Well, definitely to looking the, uh, to throw the ball a little bit more. That's been working for them. Yeah, for sure. Chase you know, Cherisolo. agree with you. Cherisolo and Madaw, that combination has been pretty deadly. Yeah. And the ball does come out to the 20-yard line on punts or on missed field goal attempts. As long as you remove the ball from the end zone, as long as you get past the goal line, the ball will automatically go out to the 20. So that's why it's out there. Cherisulo with it on with the handoff to Quick handoff. Pringle. And Pringle gets no gain on the play. So it'll be second down and ten with 723 to play. 66, Liam Dubois in on the tackle. Short gain for St. Mary's. Cherisulo. Ready to take the snap. Superior Heights with the motion to the left. And there's the toss to the left. And Pringle with a little stutter step, able to pick up some yards. Oh, nice run right yeah, there. nice Number run. He's able to pick up Pringle. seven yards. Good yardage, about eight, nine yards. Big tackle Actually on the play by number 35, Brian Behay. Brian Behay. Yeah, it's a ball from 37, Ethan Agawa. It'll be third down and two for Superior Heights. This is a big first down here, right? If you're superior, you just want to kind of get some field position back, I would think. So any type of momentum here. Third two for Superior yeah, Heights. For sure. You kind of thinking Perot up the middle here as they've had some success with that in the first half. And there it is, Perot up the middle. And he's awfully off close to, to the first down. It's going to be a little bit short, I think. Might have it. That's going to be awfully close. 
At the conclusion of the game, we will be selecting the Domino's Pizza and Team Essentials player of the game. The player of the game will receive a free medium pizza on behalf of Domino's Pizza and a player of the game t-shirt on behalf of Team Essentials. As the officials are still looking at this, and they're going to call the first down. So first down, Superior Heights. First down for Superior Heights. That's big, Marquise. Big one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, great job by the offensive line of Superior Heights, led by the center. I'm gonna have to get that name and number out there. But nice run there by Trevis Signot up the middle. Number 90, Andrew Church. Nice He's playing a heck run. of a game for this five, six yards. The Superior Heights team. So Marquise, you're obviously playing wide receiver now, having a lot of success out there. If there was another position that you would want to try in high school football, what would it be? Definitely running back. Yeah. Honestly, Cora <laughs> runs a lot, so I just want to see like yeah. how it is with that. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt you'd be able to do it and do it well as Perot with a big hard run Good and Perot moving those feet. Oh, and what a run a by Perot. Just over 10 yards, that'll be a first down. Especially brought down by yeah. Yeah. 75, William Idens. In Superior, oh, St. Mary's has a player down, and that looks Another, like uh, injury timeout. Noah Boyer is hurt for the St. Mary's Jason Knights. Idens had a little bit of with Noah Boyer. And Good. that Hard would run. be that would be Central a first and ten. devastating Spear loss Hanks. for St. Mary's as Noah Boyer run. is the heart and soul of this team. Marquise, you've had to play against Boyer. I don't know if you've had a chance to hit him yet or if you've gone up against them but what do you know about Noah Boyer if anything oh he's tough he wants to win <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely he'll do anything out there so I was on his team when I played on the Bobcats uh, oh, right okay. before COVID he's tough man yeah yeah Real so yeah you player. did play for the Bobcats so talk a little bit about that experience for you how did you enjoy that well I was young wasn't that good at football so <laughs> I didn't get much playing time but it was fun going on those trips to the U.S. and yeah. playing there teams are tough there yeah Nice job by Boyer. Good to see him walk off. Looks like he got a bit of a Charlie horse there. So that's uh, a good sign that hopefully he'll be able to come back for, for the night. But St. Mary's is, needs to try to find an answer here for Perot. So, you know, if you're the coach of St. Mary's, what would you do, Marquise, to try and slow down uh, Perot? Well, if I had Noah Boyer on still, I would rush him through the middle. But yeah. <laughs> I guess just linemen have to do their thing, try to get him. Yeah. Make sure he doesn't get no 20 yard gains. And we got a flag on the play here as Pringle takes the so toss to the outside. 30, Dax Pringle. And he gets, he gets no a couple gain. yards, but we do have a flag on the play. I think what we're seeing too is the law. Oh, we have too many men penalty against Superior Heights. It looks like they have 13 people on the field. They still have 13 people on the field. So, yeah, that's an easy call for the official. But you're right, though, Marquise. I think the difference is, is I think, you know, Kent LeBlanc for St. Mary's, you know, he left the game. Massive lineman, one of the better players in the league for St. Mary's, yeah. and he's gone. So, um, you know, he's out of the game. Now with Boyer out of the game, it seems like Superior Heights morning. is just having a having a field day out there. Oh, sorry, it's a mouth guard warning. That was my a bad. Mouth guard warning, sorry. So second down and eight from we'll set up second and eight for Superior Heights. Superior Heights' own 51-yard line going right to left. There's the handoff, Hand little off to Travis and cut back by Ben Travis and you, and he picks he up four, five, five yards. yards. Being brought, before being brought down. So third down and four. We're gonna say William Idens in on the tackle. For so Marquise, Knights. obviously you're a multi-sport athlete. You uh, you know bas basketball is clearly your first love. From midfield. Yeah. What uh, you know, I know we're going to be covering high school basketball. You know, going forward this year as well, um, boys basketball. What's your uh, you know what's your expectation of the junior loop this year? Kind of who do you think the te the team to beat is going to be, and how do you guys think you're going to do at Cora this year? Well, I think the team to beat is going to be us, but yeah. it's going to be tough this year. Yeah. We have some good players. Everybody has some good players. Yeah, it's going to be a good basketball league this year. I agree with you. I th I'm excited to see what kind of happens this year. I know you guys have quite a few great athletes in the junior division. And, um, you know, there's lots of talk about what you're going to do if you're going to stay in junior, if you're going to go to senior. We don't want to give too much away. But, you know, 
you don't have to even tell us what your decision is, but is it something that you've thought about at all? We do have a timeout. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Even just one game. Yeah. Just yeah. try it out. See, see how you like do. It, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, – I think it's going to, you know, a lot of people are looking forward to watching you kind of progress over the next few years and kind of see how you develop. So it'll be nice. Uh, it'll be nice to see you out there. That's for sure. Yeah. Time out on the play here with three minutes and three seconds to play in the third quarter. Superior Heights is down 14-7. is number 47 we apologize I know he made some plays early on and I believe Jaden Caldwell was called for him but as we mentioned Jaden is a is a lineman extraordinaire for this team not a not a running back so that was the confusion there <clears throat> so you guys Marquise next week will play superior you said right yeah so obviously, looking at this te this Superior Heights team, this is different than the team that you kind of played before, right? Yeah, for sure. What do you got, What do you think you're going to have to do at Cora next week to uh, to counter what you're seeing here today? Well, I feel like we just need to do our thing still, keep on pounding the ball. Yeah. Well, I think we'll be fine. But Superior is looking way better than Week One. Yeah, absolutely, and that's all you can ask for, right? It's just that improvement over the year and. An improvement over the over the season and you're seeing that so far yeah so superior heights looking to continue moving the football down the field motion left by Mada again and there's a pitch to pringle and pringle Fish with a good hard pringle. run up the middle or sorry off tackle tackle gets a few yards after ethan agawa makes some contact that'll be a gain of one and it'll be fourth down and no boyer or sorry call it a gain of and on three? the tackle with St. Mary's with number 35. Oh, Brian sorry. Hay. That was fourth down. I didn't even realize that was fourth down. I thought that was third down. So, big stop by big, Mary's. Yeah, huge stop That'll by Mary's. Down. Great St. play Mary's by Ethan Agawa. Unbelievable stop by Agawa. And you're right. That's a big deal, Marquise, because they were marching down the field with an opportunity to look to tie this game. And, uh, and that's a big stop by St. Mary's. We'll see what St. Mary's decides to come out with here. I haven't seen Noah Boyer back on the field. Oh, there's Boyer. Never mind. We figured he'd be back. If he can walk, he's going to play. Yeah. I think he's playing. They got him lined up at tackle. And there's a pitch to Primo on the outside. And Primo, well, Primo gets a good some momentum. He's and he's finally brought down by number 72. But Superior has the ball. Oh, Superior Heights got it? Yeah. Ball comes out. Wow. Superior Heights recovers the ball off the fumble. So there was a fumble by Primo. First and 10, Superior Heights. And just like that, Superior Heights takes control again and gets the football back. I didn't even see the fumble. Did you see that come out? No, I yeah. just saw Superior jumping. Yeah. So with 2.19 to play, that's a big Looks turnover. Like 21, Chase yeah. Christie with the fumble recovery for Superior Heights. And Chase First with and the 10. recovery. Superior Heights and uh, St. Mary's will be playing in the senior game later. Marquise, I know that you know you uh, you've seen both of these teams. Kind of, what are you expecting in the senior game today? Well, it's definitely going to be a close game like this. Both senior teams are good. They both played our Cora. And but there's sorry, there's Torello, and there's going to be a flag Chisola on the play. But what a pass again a by Mada. Marquise, just like you called, Chisola right? We said, what do we need to do to get back in this game? And you said, I expect As to see the throws. pass a little bit. Yeah. And that's a beautiful throw to Mada. It was nice coverage on the play, really. All Egawa had to do was kind of turn his head a Passing little bit, Chris. but that's a tough thing to do, you know, especially yeah, for Chris. a young DB. But he was he had good coverage there. If he would have just turned his head, that would have been uh, no pass interference. But they are going to call pass interference, so that's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be first down and 10, superior heights from the St. Mary's. 45 or sorry 50 yard line that'll be a 15 yard penalty it's the big drive automatic first heights. down yeah first and if, they if they can somehow if they can somehow punch you know punch one home here and get any points at all it's going to put some pressure on st mary so it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens going forward here again i'm out, I, i'm really impressed by the play of uh, of andrew church from superior heights 
I don't know if you know Andrew at all, but no. Yeah, he's the big number 90, the big center there. Oh, yeah. And there's and Alex, Perot, or there's Perot again. He about three yards before he's pushed back by Albert Perot with a three-yard gain. So, obviously, Marquise, you know, you were part of the COVID situation, right, and ended up missing playing a couple years of sports. Um, you know, some vital years, right? You know, great, what, your grade six and seven year, correct? Yeah. So, you know, two really important years. Do you feel like missing those two years has hurt your development in any way? Not really. No? I, I kept on working during COVID. Good. I think I was fine. But definitely the first few games when I was back, it did feel a little weird. Yeah. Sorello now under center again. And there's a handoff to Ben. And Trevis Signot picks up another four yards. So this Trevis offense of Superior run. Heights is just, yards. you know, get three, four yards, it seems, every play and, and kind of see what you 66. do, right? Six. Yeah. Leave the wall on the tackle right for St. Mary's. Sets up third and four. So it's third down and three. What are you calling here if you're Superior Heights? Run up the middle. Yeah, keep going with it, eh? Yeah. Keep going with what works. Yeah, until Mary seems to be able to stop it. That's, uh, that's a good call, so we'll see what they decide to do. Trevis Nio motions to the left. He takes that handoff. Trevis another Nio. outstanding another good, another job by that offensive Spend line. By number 63, nice Landon Serencia. And they're going to call. A yeah. It's going to be a first down, but Serencia after the play, they're going to call help. a 15-yard penalty on Andrew Church. Excellent. You know. Gave a couple extra shots after the whistle, it seemed like. But conduct you know what? I don't get mad at those penalties because, you know, you want your linemen. You know, you play quarterback. You've played all these positions. You want your linemen blocking for you. So, yeah. you know, you want to see them block to the whistle. And uh, and showing that little bit of aggressiveness there by Church, I'm okay with. So what will happen is the ball will be moved backwards? So it will be first down and 10 superior heights from the St. Mary's 48-yard line. I think why that's a big deal, though, Marquise, is because, off, be you know, when you have an heights. offense where you're only able to pick up three, four, yard five line. yards, giving up that 15 yards is a big deal because oh, it's tough yards. to get those yards back, right? Yeah. So first and 10 for Superior Heights with 13 seconds to play in the third quarter. And Sorello with a handoff there to Pringle with a beautiful oh. cut. Pringle with and a Pringle gets some yards. The outside, and they're going to call flags two on flags play. on the play. Excellent yardage. Good, solid 15-yard run. Eventually run out of bounds by the secondary of the Knights. Unfortunately, I think both calls are going to go against Superior Heights. I'm not sure what the um, rough play rule is, but that might be two against Church, and I don't know if that if it's two or three that leads to an ejection. You'd hate to see that on a on a you know on a lineman who's just being aggressive, but uh, you know if you're Coach Kluster, you have to. You know, you, you can't lose church, so. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's two. It is two? But yeah. Yesterday when I got my penalty, they said I, if I get one more, I'm out. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. What'd you get the penalty for? Spiking the ball. Oh, after yes. Touchdown. Yes. But you know what? We talked about that, right? And that's one of those things, though, Marquise. You know, you're a young athlete. You get excited. You made an outstanding catch. For anyone who hasn't seen it, go back and watch this one-handed. You know, he, he mossed this kid. And, uh, and, and the thing was, was the coverage was perfect. Like, couldn't have done any better, right? It was just a beautiful throw, beautiful catch. And then Marquise goes down and spikes the ball. And, you know, he's excited. That's okay. But just to show your character, Marquise, and the type of young man you were, was right after you did it, no one had to tell you anything. The ball, you know, you're so strong. The ball went about 30 yards away. Yeah. And you went over without being told. So you picked up the ball, returned like it to the ref right away, right? So that was a classy move, you know, despite, you know, the spike. So yeah. that was definitely something that was noticeable. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. So these penalties are really hurting Superior first Heights right now. First and 25, Superior Heights. First and 25. So this will be the, be last, the last play, play of, the of the third quarter. If I'm Superior Heights, I'm just throwing it up to number six. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're going to run with Perot. Perot. Oh, big run. Yeah, Perot is able to pick about up about six, yards. six or seven yards there. So nice job. Going to make that a little bit more respectable. Brian so it'll be with the tackle second the down and six. 16-ish, we'll call it. So I know you said we'd only have you for the third quarter, Marquise, but if you want to stay for the rest, you're more than welcome. All right, sounds good. All right, perfect. Coach Bouge, I think, is over there working on the clock, so 
And you're doing a good job up here, so we'll keep you. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to have... I'm not sure... Oh, they're just looking at... Uh, they're going to switch switch sides here, so it'll be first down and 10. They're going to switch sides? Superior, uh, superior heights. It'll start with the fourth quarter. From right around midfield. So you have three really good quarterbacks at Cora. You want to talk about the, your three quarterbacks that you have? Yeah, so our starter, Bryson Sloss, he's, he was on the team since last year, grade 10. He's really good. And then we have our backup, Alex Varpio. Yep. Uh, he was the person that threw me that pass yesterday. Oh, okay, yeah. He's a, He has a really good arm. And then our third string, Zane Murdoch, that's my boy. Yep. He, he's in grade 9, that's why he's third string. But I feel like next year he's going to be the starter 100%. Yeah, you know what? It's it's nice, right? And and we talked about this a lot. And this is, doesn't take anything away from Sloss or Varpio because they're both outstanding pl players and deserve to be the starting quarterback and backup quarterback. Yeah. But it's all there's not much difference between them and Zane, right? And you know, I feel like Zane would start on a lot of uh, a lot of other high schools here in Sault Ste. Marie. For you sure. know, so uh, you know, nice to see that uh, that you guys have that depth and and you playing you know you played quarterback this summer. So what kind of uh, that must have offered you a new perspective on the position a little bit, right? Yeah. What did you learn this summer by playing quarterback? Well, it's harder than it looks. Yeah. You have to, you have <laughs> to know everything on the field. You have to know what everybody's doing. It's tough. Yeah, absolutely. It's not an, not an easy job, <laughs> that's yeah. for sure. You have to run your whole offense. Yeah. So, Superior Heights, second down and 16. Like second down and There's 18. a handoff there to oh, Pringle big and big Excellent hole. By number 30, Dax and Pringle. nice cut he up the middle. Cole Reve with a touchdown saving tackle, but that'll be first heights. down and 10. Superior heights. What was that, 17 yards? Yeah, yeah. So it, they they started, they were first and 25, and then they were able to bring it down and they were able to get a big gain there. So first down and 10 from where? It looks like the 35 yard line now of the St. Mary's Knights. Sarasulo under center. He takes the handoff back to Pringle. They're just feeding Another him. Another good hard run by Pringle. And he's wrapped he's up by number 39. 39. Tyler Katie, who's Tyler finally Katie. seen some action out here. 37. You know Tyler Katie, sorry, I believe, from the summer. Yeah, he was on Cole my team this summer. Yeah, he was a he, – he really came – you know, as the season progressed, he seemed like he got better and better as yeah. the season went on. He played running back for – or slot back for you guys? Uh, no, he played fullback for fullback. a game or two because oh, okay. we were down so many guys, so we just had to get anybody. Yeah, and I think that might have been against us because he actually did a pretty good job when yeah. he played there, yeah. Sarasulo with the handoff to Trevis Signor, right up the middle. Oh. And Trevis Signor cuts to the outside. He gets to the outside Another for big run. Yeah. another 10 yeah. yards. Nice. Who made that tackle? That was another touchdown saving tackle by Ouellette. So, yeah, Marquise, we're seeing Superior kind of take it to St. Mary's. You know, that's St. Mary's strength, right, is their run game too. And now you're seeing Superior Heights give them a dose of their own medicine here. Yeah. Definitely closer than I would expect. First, yeah. first and ten, Superior Heights from about the 16 of St. Mary's. If you're Superior Heights, you just keep hammering the rock and kind of until St. Mary's can stop it. Yeah, keep on giving it to Dax and Pringle number 30. Yeah. I feel like he's good. Oh, Perot almost Perot. fumbled that one again, Holds but was able to hold on to it. And he falls game. forward for a gain of three or four yards. So second down and seven. What kind of adjustment okay, do you think St. Mary's should make here in order to try and get a stop? I feel like they just need to put more guys in the middle because like, that's what Superior is doing. It's working for them, so yeah. that's what Mary's has to do to stop it. Do you know Dax Pringle at all? Uh, no, I just know he plays soccer. Oh, he is? Okay, because, yeah, yeah, I've never player. seen him play before, and he's this is the first game I think I've really seen him play, and it's really caught my eye. He's had a strong performance here today for the Superior Heights team. I think this is his first game. Oh, okay. He joined halfway through the season. Oh, okay. Hand off again to Dax and Pringle. Pringle. Big run by oh. Him. He dodges one tackle, gets a couple of yards before being brought down. I wasn't sure Ivins if he got face masks there, but obviously all the refs Mary's. would have seen that if he was, so <laughs> yeah. good no call. But nice little game there well, by with Pringle. Number 87, Cole Carrillo. And we have we a, a timeout time on the field. St. Mary's. Mary's, so it'll be third down and three from the St. Mary's, I believe that's the 15-yard line with 8.52 to play in the fourth quarter. 
if you were to tell me before the game that you know we'd have a, a seven point game going into the fourth quarter I don't know if I necessarily would have believed you so this is a, a huge improvement by the Superior Heights team yeah this is a big game for them um, obviously you guys played White Pines yesterday you know, White Pines, nice to see them come back this year and, and nice to have a fourth team kind of in the junior loop. Yeah. What was your experience? I know we kind of talked a little bit earlier, but you were very complimentary of uh, of White Pines and kind of what they gave you yesterday. Just kind of talk a little bit about that game yesterday and kind of what you saw from White Pines. Well, it was tough at first. I got I got <laughs> knocked on my butt a few times, so <laughs> gave me a taste of my own medicine. Yeah. So it was, they were tough, though. They were good. They got the first touchdown against us. Yeah. It was a good game. Yeah, and uh, I think that was uh, – who was on you? Was, Gar was that Neshoba Moore on yeah, you on yeah. the outside? And, and, you know, I know. are you buddies with him or do you know him? Yeah. Or, yeah, so, if, you know, you were talking about how, you know, one of, they were going to put one of their better de defensive players on you. And uh, and you're not an easy guy to stop. And, and again, I don't want to keep, you know, harping on that catch you made. But, m you know, you did. You, you made an outstanding one-handed catch. <laughs> But more, the coverage he had on you was just absolutely perfect. You know, yeah, I don't think I there's know. anyone that could have stopped that. So, uh, and you kind of talked about how tough White Pines was, right? And, yeah. And, and how they they hit hard and those types of things. Superior Heights takes third over. This four. is a third big third Superior down and Heights. four play here. You have to think it's going to be Perot or Trevis and Yo up the middle again, as that's what's worked for them. But they're oh, going to go to Pringle, Pringle. and oh. Pringle kicks Pringle. it to the left side, and Dax down. Pringle is Touchdown. in for the major. You called it, Marquise. Pringle makes no mistake as he's able to score. Huge run by Superior, and they uh, cut the lead to one with an opportunity to tie the game. And it looks like there's another player down there for Marys. So with 8.44 to play in the fourth quarter, Superior Heights with a great opportunity to tie the game here. And, you know, if we watch Superior Heights at all this year, easily one of the strengths of their team has been their kicking game. As, uh, you know, you talked about Pringle actually being a, a, f a soccer player, and that actually makes a lot of sense now watching him kick the ball because yeah. he has an absolute boot on him. And uh, and this is a big opportunity here to tie the game. I can't see who's down over there for Marys. 14, 13 but St. Mary's, extra point pending, of course. <coughs> so who's your position coach uh, at Cora this year? Uh, Yost and Bodner. Ryan okay. Yost, Seven yeah. Bodner, yeah. Ryan Yost, the quarterback for the Sioux Steelers. Yeah. yeah he played there, f played at Cora for a number of years. Outstanding athlete. So that's good. Who else do you guys have on your coaching staff up there? Uh, Besides Coach Booch, obviously. We have Coach Elliott. He's the okay. D-line coach. Coach Cass, O-line. Um, oh, you're putting me I know, I'm putting you on the spot, man. I know, I apologize. Uh, but no, you did a good job. I, Yeah. We have a few more coaches. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Spot, yeah, but. that's all good. No, I know, and, and that's the nice thing about Cora, right? Is they do have that, you know, really good coaching staff, and and that's kind of what they're known for too. Is is just the attention to detail, right? That yeah. they spend, right? So, obviously, you've uh, you've you, you do play basketball. You're going away on a tournament here coming up. Um, how do you manage? you know, kind of going between sports. If, if Is that is that difficult to do? Because I know that there's a lot of times where things will overlap and, and that type of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. You definitely have to, like, manage it both somehow. But I do it. Yeah. We have a game next Friday against Superior, and I'm leaving to Toronto right after it. So <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I have to make it work somehow. That's crazy. That's good. And that's exciting, right? It's nice that you're getting to play these tournaments in Toronto and things like that, kind of get that exposure. Yeah. And there's a stab. I'm going, oh, and is that – Oh. I'm not sure how that was an offside on St. Mary's as it looked like their entire left side not the greatest snap. Uh, <laughs> kind of had trouble setting the ball, led to moved, the but that's short kick. a big, 14, big, big Mary's. miss. And you know what? That's what they call the announcer's curse, right, or the announcer's jinx when I said that it seemed like extra points were the strength and the kicking game was the strength of the Superior Heights team, and then obviously they, they missed the extra points. So. Yeah. Yeah, but with 8:44 to play, I mean, this is a this is a football game, and Superior Heights is in this, so that's all you can really ask for. I feel like Superior is definitely going to go onside again, try that. 
kind of worked last time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's a. You're right. The, the onside kick was beautiful, and uh, just wasn't able to get that bounce. But what surprised me was St. Mary's didn't really adjust to the onside kick right yeah. when they lined up for it. So you have to assume that Coach Kuroda is over there. Uh, kind of lining them up in a just in case this is what you do scenario. Yeah. And looks like that is what he's doing. So, I mean, if you're superior heights, it's a tough decision, right? Because, you know, you need the football back, but also you don't necessarily have a big play offense, so to speak. Yeah. So, you know, that field position is a big deal. However, Dax Pringle has kind of, you know, he's shown the ability to be able to kind of be a little explosive. Yeah, big part for the superior team this game. Yeah. So it looks like they are just going to line up in a normal kicking formation with 8.44 to play. This has been a, a long game here today, so I think there's going to be a slight delay in the junior, or sorry, in the senior game as a result. Sorry, 7.30 start for the senior game, my apologies. And Pringle with a big boot. What Terrific a kick. kick. And nice play by St. Mary's to grab that in Good the air on the 35. run by Brian Bahe. Ba and Bahe makes some guys miss. And Brian he gets out to, to just past the 50 the yard 50 line. The what a big Terrific play that run. was by Bahe. One heck of a kick. That's one of those things where you're almost out kicking your coverage, right, in yeah. a sense. And if that's one of those ones where if it hits the ground, that could roll into the end zone. Number 20 in on the tackle. But to your point, Marquis, you know, you try an onside kick there, you're getting the ball basically in the exact same spot that St. Mary's has it now, right, on yeah. that big return. So, And you never know what happens. If yeah. I was superior, I would be doing that yeah. onside kick. But. Yeah. So St. Mary's now looking to extend the lead here. So Mary's offense hasn't been on the field a whole lot. What would you do right now if you're St. Mary's? Definitely just keep on running the ball. Yeah. I feel like that's what's been working for them. My buddy Cole Reve having a few big, big runs. I know. He's unbelievable. He's been playing great today. Yeah. And there's a pitch to Primo to the outside. Primo. Puts his head down. Primo. There is a flag on the play. He's met by number 47. It'll be a holding penalty against St. Mary's. So it'll be first down and 20. Kevin Jones. Yeah, a little help. So it will be a we'll hold. Back ten will be first and twenty. It will be a holding penalty against St. Mary, so it'll be first down and twenty. It's a big penalty at this stage of the game here, Marquise. Right? You know, yeah. first down and, and and twenty is uh, is tough to overcome. But Superior Heights was able to do it last time, so we'll see if Marys can do it. I'd like to see. You know, I know St. Mary's is probably trying to protect Alex Hayes just a little bit, but I'd like to see them use him in the running game a little bit more. I feel like his. his uh, you know, we all know he can throw, but I feel like he he's a huge weapon with his legs, too, and he doesn't get to use that too much so far in this season. Yeah. Superior Heights basically coming out coming out in a cover zero. And Hayes with a rollout. He's got some receivers open. There's Carrillo. And they pick up about 13 yards of that back, which is nice. I'll say he's got 10 yard pass. And, ag oh, and, and again, Botang was wide open downfield. But Alex Hayes does a terrific job of actually following his reads, right? And I think Carrillo's his Max first Clement, read on that Dirty play. On so he's right. always open, Second so he has to make the, that, that throw, right? So it's nice to see. And Max Clement, he played for you guys this summer, right? Yeah. Talk a little bit about Max as a, as a linebacker. Well, Max, me and him, like, I don't know. We didn't know each other at first, but then we started talking, and now we're good friends. But he's really good of a football player especially on the, on the St. Mary's Knights. Yeah. But I don't know why Superior Heights isn't using him on the on the ball ends up in the hands of Cole Yeah, Cole. for sure. He's that's a, that's something I think you're gonna see. Nifty little number play there by St. Mary's. That's the kind of the Heights. that's kind of the play Chase you guys Christie. run at Cora, right? Nick that was the that, first and ten that was the the little slot counter there. 
And Mary's uses that, you know, from time to time for big gains, and it absolutely worked there. So huge gain for Mary's, and they're able to pick up the first down to make it first down and 10 from the Superior Heights 29-yard line. But, yeah, Max and Clement, uh, I've known the whole family, coached all of, pretty much all of his brothers, um, you know, outstanding athlete. And, and, uh, and he really came to as a football player as he gets in almost on the stop there. But, you know, Maxim, I'm not sure what happened to him this year. He just, it's almost like he grew into his body or something yeah. and he was able to kind of figure it out because he was an absolute monster for you guys in, in, uh, in Sioux Minor. Yeah, I know. He was a big part for our team. Yeah. Especially when when I switched to defense, me and him were unstoppable. Oh, I know. I know. It wasn't fun. Yeah. Hayes takes over for Mary. Second down and seven. And Hayes with a rollout. And he's got guys wide open again. And he hits Alex Ouellette. Hayes. Looks like he passes to Liam Ouellette. I'll tell you this, we though. We have a flag oh. on the play after the play. I'll tell you this, uh, Marquise, after the game, if I'm, uh, if I'm Boateng, tackle. I'm going up to the coaches saying, please watch this video as I've been wide open on every single road. Yeah. <laughs> Boateng's been absolutely gone. Just there the, is, oh, I, sorry, sorry, there is a rough play here against Superior Heights. What were you going to say? I just how I know Omari, he's going to be mad that he, just, he isn't getting these targets yeah. this game. But. <laughs> yeah. So it's a rough play against Superior Heights. It'll be 15 yards attached to that. So it'll be first down and 10, Mary's. What a terrific drive here by St. Mary's, though, right? They uh, they were able to kind of, uh, St. Uh, sorry, St. Mary's, you know, up against the ropes, kind of not doing great, and then all of a sudden they're able to come back like and and really uh, and really take it to superior, superior heights. heights on this drive. That's going to move the ball all the way down to the 13 yard line. First and 10, St. Mary's. And there's a run oh, to the Abel outside by Primo. Tackle by number 87, Carter Nabel. So it'll be second down and seven. Hayes under center. Hayes with a handoff right Hayes up the middle, down. and he stopped Man, immediately, at the line immediately by number 62. Grayson Monero. Grayson Monero was an un played unbelievable against you guys. I remember that he yeah. was making tackles in the backfield. He was player of the game. Um, you know, that's a that's a huge job there, and he did a nice job on that. So we have third down and seven here, or third down and eight, Marquise. What are you looking for if you're uh, if you're St. Mary's? I'm St. Mary's. Honestly, I'm just going to run it. I feel like that's what's been working for them. And yep. They do like a toss left. They have so much field for Bo Primo or even Corve. Yeah. Primo's, uh, Primo's quick, eh? He yeah. just, I think this is his, oh, and there's Hayes rolling out to his left. And Hayes with a big stiff arm. Yeah, and crazy. they're going to call a foul, or they're going to call a flag Alex on Hayes that. Keeps the ball, gets a couple yards, tries a stiff arm, but we do have a flag. So this is one of those things where it's going to be rough play, a face mask against Alex Hayes. And it's one of those Mary's. things that you got called on it this summer, Base actually, mask? in Sioux Minor, right? Yeah. And it's one of those, it's one of those things where it's just Mary's to protect the head. Field. You're allowed to make contact down. with the head, but it's the, it's the pop. You can't pop a guy, right, in the yeah. head like that on a stiff arm anymore. And that's kind of what happened right there. And, and that's just a football play. And, and there's, you know, you can't really fault Hayes for that as he was just trying to get the first down. But that will be a 15-yard penalty. So it'll be third down and... Well, we'll call it third down and 25. So, you know, this is one of those things where, Marquise, what would you do? So you have the, you know, it's obviously third down, but let's just say it gets to fourth down. Would you attempt the punt for a single? Would you attempt the extra point? Or, sorry, would you attempt the field goal, or would you attempt going for uh, for the touchdown? I would go for the touchdown, honestly. Yeah. You just have to see what happens. I think here, I think they're going to air it out. Honestly, yeah. If they if if they looked at Botang, Botang has been absolutely un 
like he hasn't even been covered, right? Put him so on a 15 yard out. He's exactly. Wide open. Yeah. So they're talking about this, about where they want to spot the ball. I believe the spot happens from where the foul happens. So it'll be 15 yards back from the spot of the foul. So it will be. Oh, did they decline the penalty? I think they did. I, I don't, we're going to have to see what the ofi the officials are sitting here talking about this. I'm not in. 409 left in the fourth quarter. We got ourselves a one point game. St. I'm Mary's inside the tennis field. Yeah, nice. yeah, 100%. 100 space to run the ball. 100% accepting that penalty would be the correct call. I guess they're going to. Okay, so yeah, so it, oh, so so what they called was, so it actually is a loss of down plus the fifteen yards, so it's going to be fourth down and. Oh goodness, yeah, fourth down and twenty. That's big. Yeah. Okay. I'm not entirely sure why it's why it's fourth down and they're not replaying the third. I I don't. I'm not exactly sure there. I, I thought it would be third down and Looks replay like the down. Change the call and yeah. not decline the penalty. All dependent on the field position of. Having a discussion up here in the booth, we all believe it should be third down, and I think Coach Kuroda is asking the same question, and he's getting an explanation from the officials as to why it's not third down. So both coaches are getting an explanation. I'll have to go down and find out the reasoning behind that as well afterwards, just for my own sake. So Marquise, to your point, fourth down and long, you know, you would run a play here and go for it? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I like that aggressiveness. I, I I don't know if I would be inclined to take the rouge or what, right? Because if you get the single, if you can get one point, you would force Superior Heights to for a field goal or a touchdown. Yeah. To win, right? Whereas you can kick the single for the tie. So, interesting decision here by Coach Kuroda. Let's see if Marius can make something out of this. Yeah, this is a big play here. Absolutely. Okay. I feel like they definitely are going to air it out to both hang, but we'll see. <laughs> You'd hope so. Oh, it looks like they are bringing out. <clears throat> it looks like fourth down St. Mary's. Oh, they are going to kick it. From looks the 23. Like. Yeah. Is it going to be an extra point or a f or sorry, is it going to be a field goal or a punt, I guess, will be the real question. Personally, I love, I absolutely love the punt call here. If they're going to punt, that's probably what I would do in this situation is punt. I like I like going for the uh, for the one point here. What's the punt rule? So, if you punt the ball and you get tackled in the end zone, or the ball goes out of bounds in the end zone, you get one point. Oh, okay. So that's why you, it's, it's it's different. It's only in Canadian football, right? Yeah. So you can get the one point here. So I like this call. I really like this call. So that's a nice kick. Kick is you up. You want it to bounce like that. And now if Marys can get down there and cover it, and he's on the ground, so that's exactly what St. Marys wanted. So now St. Marys will get one point in the end and zone. extend the lead to 15 to 13, times. and Superior Heights will take over at their own, I believe it's their own 35-yard line. Oh, all right. So or maybe it's their own 20. But, yeah, so that's the reason, right? So now Superior Heights needs a field goal or a touchdown instead of just needing the, uh, the one. So I like that call by Coach Kuroda. I, uh, I think that's the right call, absolutely. And that's definitely what I would have done there. So, obviously, if that's what I would have done, I'm going to think it's the right call, whether it is or isn't just yeah. <laughs> is irrelevant. So, yeah, it'll be first down and 10 for Superior Heights from the 35-yard line. Noticing that Andrew Church is still in here. Yeah, two penalties, I know, so I know. <laughs> must be three then. Yeah. Or maybe maybe the ref didn't give it. I don't know. Maybe the ref didn't give him an OC. I'm not sure, right? Yeah. But, yeah. So we'll be announcing the players of the game relatively shortly here. Superior Heights. It got pretty dark here pretty quick all of a sudden there. A couple clouds rolled in, I guess. And, yeah. <laughs> and there he is again. I expect 
to your point, I expect to see Dax Pringle a lot on this drive. So he's been big for them this game. So hopefully he does something this drive because they need it. Yeah. Second down and six for Superior Heights. Coach Kluster saying that they need a little bit of urgency there, and he's right. And there's Ben Trevisigno with a good hard run up the middle, and he picks up five the yards. It'll be third down and a yard Stops. and a half. Trevisigno. After five, four yards. It's the three-minute warning here. 66. For Mary's. Needs to be a big stop for St. Mary's. Yeah, if they can With get a assist, stop here, it'll be interesting to see what Superior Heights. I mean, they're going to go for 13. it. You would have to assume on fourth down now, but yeah. you got two plays to get, you know, a yard. So, are you going to? What would you do here? Would you take a shot and go for it on fourth, like run a pass play here? Or would you just play it safe and try and get the first down? I would just play it safe. Yeah, honestly. Here we go, third to one. So I'd be looking for Albert Perot here up the middle. He's had a ton of success, and yeah, there he is. is. Yep. That's a per big first down. Yeah. Off to Albert right. Perot. And, and again, I keep talking about this, but to go down. that job that, you know, church down. number 66, Good hard run. Keegan Staniforth, uh, 62, Taylor, Grayson Renero, number 56, I, Emerson I Scott. Uh, those guys deserve a ton of credit for the four. game that they're playing here today. They are... They're balling out hard here for this team. And, uh, sorry, Carson Petit as well is on that line. Outstanding job by that offensive line of Superior Heights. And there's Pringle. And Pringle, oh, oh Pringle what a, a touchdown run. saving tackle yards. by Cody Lusinski. If he broke that, yeah. he was gone. <laughs> yeah, and that was a heck Cody of a Lezinski. tackle by Lusinski. So it'll be second Chihuahua down and in on the tackles. we'll call it second down and a long three. Sets up second and three. Say Mary's can't find the answer for this run game. That, that's for sure, not yet. Oh, Boyer is out there, which is a good sign for St. Mary's. And there's the handoff again to Pringle, and they're just going to ride him, I think, all the way here and see if he can break one. But that's enough for a first down. So Another, that'll be first down and 10. Uh, Superior Heights with a minute 50 left. left. Marquise, a little surprised that they're not uh, showing a little bit more urgency Cody and Lewinsky running it a little quicker here? Or do you like that's the fact down. that Superior Heights is kind of slowing the game down a little bit? Well, I would slow the game down. If Ladies and gentlemen, close. after yep. the game, Honestly, but. we kindly ask that all high school students Please make their way outside of the facility between games. Please remember to have your ticket ready upon re-entry. Once again, we kindly ask all high school students to please make their way outside of the facility between games. And please remember to have your ticket ready upon re-entry. Trevis, Trevis and yo, kicks it to the outside. Oh, Trevis and with a great run and second effort. Nice effort there. He's able to pick up five yards. Both five yards. Ethan Agua in on the tackle for St. Mary's. So with 1.31 to play, Superior Heights is slowly moving their way down the field here. And Marquise, you talked about the fact that Pringle is a football, or sorry, is a soccer player, and, you know, he kicks a nice ball. So a field goal might be an option here for Superior. I'm not sure how much they've worked on it with them, but. Yeah. And there's Perot again. Albert Perot. And Albert Perot. Looks like he gets, a gets enough for yardage. the first down. I like this. I like this play calling here by Superior Heights, Heights right? Shawana. Slow it down, kind of. In on the tackle for St. Mary's. That's right. right. It's, it's stop time Superior right now. Heights. Just keep moving the ball. Keep moving the ball. Yeah. Looks like from the 37 yard line of St. Mary's. So first down and 10, Superior Heights from the St. Mary's 37 yard line. And there's the pitch to Pringle. Pitch to Pringle. And nice stop by the St. Mary's line. linebacker, number 35, Cody Lazinski. Bust through the line. We haven't called Cody's name a whole lot early on. And, uh, but, man, 12. this last drive, Marquise, he's 
been a he's been a single you know he's been a wrecking ball out there for the St. Mary's Knights single handedly kind of holding Superior Heights away. Yeah. So you see the importance now of that one point, right? Because if Superior Heights had the opportunity, they could punt for the one potentially and tie the game. But now St. Mary's does have that lead with 45 seconds to go. And Sarasulo's back to pass. He's got guys wide open, and it's just Perfect out of the hands of Madaw. Beautiful play there by Sarasulo, and Madaw got his fingertips on it. He's a... He's a tall kid, Madaw, isn't he? I'd, yeah. So with 42 seconds left, it's third down and 11, Marquise. What do you call in here if you're the coach? I think Will Madaw wants another pass, so I yeah. think they're gonna. He's gonna want to at least air it out one yeah. more time. But if not, it's gonna be a run. So here goes Sarasulo. This is huge, big play here for Superior Heights. Madaw in motion to the right. Trevor Signot motion to the left. Sarasulo with a rollout. He gets around the DN. And what a play by Carullo! He's tackled as he throws. Carullo with the game saving play for the St. Mary's Knights. Call it Carullo. Ball recovered. Sarasulo took a shot player. there. But what a play by Carullo when it was needed. And the St. Mary's Knights are Trisola going to escape with a 15-13 victory. Marquise, what are your thoughts? <laughs> play. Big play by number 87, Cole yeah. Carrillo there. Our players of the game, our Domino's Pizza and uh, player of the game, will go for St. Mary's to number 30, Cole Reve. So Cole Reve will receive a free medium pizza and a Team Essentials Player of the Game t-shirt. Cole did an outstanding job, Marquise, on both sides of the ball here today left. for this night's over. team and uh, really played well. So congratulations to Cole Reve. Yeah, I feel like he's adjusted really well in high school football. Yeah, but. Absolutely. And the Player of the Game for the Superior, Hawks, Superior Heights Steel Hawks we're going to give it to a lineman. And speak of Cole Rive, he's just Good putting a stamp on this as he goes out of bounds. Out of bounds and there's going to be a flag on the play. The player of the game for Superior Heights. We we're going to give it line. to a lineman because that line today has played unbelievable for Superior. And it was all led. We talked about him quite a bit. It was led by number 90, Andrew Church, the monster center for that Superior Heights Steelhawks. You know, we could have given it to Pringle. We could have given it to Cerullo. You know, or, uh, there's a lot of players who deserved it for Superior. But, if you know, we talked about those massive holes that uh, Superior Heights had to run through. So we're going to give that to Andrew Church. So congratulations to Andrew and to Cole on Player of the Game Awards here today. I expect St. Mary's to take a knee here for the last uh, couple plays, or you would suspect that they would take a knee in victory formation. Yeah. As Hayes goes under center. Oh, and they're, they are running a play as Reve takes again it. With the ball. It's Good risky. Uh, they almost fumbled the snap there, so a little risky. Uh, Risky play calling a little bit by St. Mary's. Yeah, I'll just take the knee. Yeah, take the knee, and, and that would be the game. And You never know what could happen, right? So <laughs> yeah. just want to be safe. That's right. It's second, it's second down and three, so all you would need are two knees, and the game would be over. Yeah. I think they're just going to take a knee right now. Hawks winding now. Yeah. They don't look like they are, though. That's the I thing. So they're calling delay a game against St. Mary's. So because of that, I mean, it's not, again, that goes back to the just take a knee thing, right? If they take yeah. a knee, it's <laughs> it's over. Game would be over by now. Exactly. It's whatever. Yeah. So, Marquise, listen, I really appreciate you joining me up here. I know this was your first time uh, doing this. Uh, I thought you did a great job. You answered the questions. I asked you some tough questions, kind of put you on the spot a few times, which isn't easy. But, uh, you know, you really represented yourself well. You represented the Cora Colts well. And uh, 
and good job. Thank you so much. And hopefully we can have you up here again to do this if you enjoyed it. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, sure. that, that, that was great, man. And we look forward to watching you throughout the rest of the season and uh, definitely whatever you end up doing in basketball. Middle. So yeah. thank you so much. Anytime. Quick tackle, and that's the game. So we thank everybody for tuning Final in score, to high school 15. junior football here from Superior, Superior Heights, Heights in Sault Ste. Marie. Terrific the St. Mary's, St. Mary's Knights. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you Are to victorious around. with a 15 to 13 lead. We thank you again so much Senior for tuning schools. in. We'll be back at well, 7:30 for senior football action. So I'm Tony Bonifero on behalf of Coach Bouge from the first half, Marquis Strawbridge from the second half, and Jay Houselander in studio. We thank you very much for tuning in and look forward to seeing you at 7:30. Thanks again. Senior Knights and Superior Senior Steelhawks take to the field for their warmups.